satisfied with in between. That's right. Well. It oh, did the meta villains just go live? It did. Oh, mm, oh. crazy. Ain't that something? Wow. I really turn my phone down. <laughs> you can even watch our stream of live. Actually, make live. Oh wow, look at that. I will do you the courtesy of not asking for your Wi-Fi password <laughs> <laughs> while we're streaming. <laughs> it's hardwired, it'll be fine. Damn. Come on, man, like Granny McSermons can can host all. Yeah. <laughs> cool. It looks good. Like that yeah. shirt. Should have brought the right. Funhouse shirt that was on clearance. I bought a bunch of shit from them. I saw you had that cute little sweater on yesterday. It's so nice, dude. That's it's the nicest fucking, little. It looks good. Yeah, it that's, makes it. It's like I it bought it because it was a sweater, and I'm like, I'm gonna need this for three days down here in Florida total, and for the three days I'll be in New York. But then I'll never have to wear it again because it'll immediately be 80 degrees next month. So yeah, yeah, it's gonna be 70 sad. at the end of next week. Plus, it's slimming. Yeah. Wearing bigger things. I don't, I don't know why I have this. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I sold. I sold that shitty TV and then just forgot to give him the the remote. The remote. Damn. But well done. I don't care. I saw. You saw how that TV was like on its last legs. I yeah. sold it for a hundred dollars. Like I fucking. Yeah. I f fucking ran that dude for up. money. It should. I should have just given it to him for free. That's to his be fault. Honest. That's his fault. All right. So true. Uh, hey. Whatever. We're doing a podcast. Welcome to the Meta Villains. Welcome, Welcome. to the Meta Villains podcast. End, End of the year, year 2017. Yeet. It's a lot, uh, lot smaller of an audience this time. Well, participate. Yeah, I was going to say, the audience yeah. is still small. The audience is. But the participation is even smaller. Yeah. We don't which is probably for the best. 30 people crammed into this Because room. that was the best and the worst podcast. Yeah, <laughs> Having... Yeah, all of these, I'm I'm kind of sad Kevin's not here though, because that would have been like the, that would have been like the best in he, joke. I mean, could still show up. Who knows? That is fair. True. Yeah. True well, story. We'll just crunch in. So what are we gonna what are we gonna do? What are we talking about? We got a lot to talk about. We can talk about our years. We can talk about our favorite things and our worst favorite, our least favorite things about the year. So much has happened. When was the last time a real podcast happened? Uh, a real podcast happened right before the um, right before we switched to D and D. We actually had a topic on the last one. I don't remember what it was. It was the one right after the Gundam podcast, I think. Mm -hmm. hmm. Um, and that that happened in the summer. Uh, so how was it? Was it that long ago? No, it was like October, late wasn't it? Summer, October still late. We live in Florida. Okay. Fair, fair <laughs> shit, fair shit. We don't, we don't have fall, so technically yeah. that is correct. This is fall. Yeah, it was. Uh yeah, what, what it was it was before Halloween, <laughs> the fall of winter. No, it's uh, but, um, what, are you, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, why, why did it? What what is what are we looking at? Uh, he's looking at the Amazon. Yes, sir. Uh, listing oh. of his Amazon. of his paperback project that he has been working on tirelessly for the past. I love the alliteration. Lifetime. That's pretty good. Now, can I have like a hard? hard that was that was. They're on the way. They're on the way. Okay. Or you could, if you haven't bought it yet, through me, just buy it off Amazon. It'll probably arrive sooner. True. Yeah. Then it'll arrive to me. Literally, right there. <laughs> it's like Prime eligible. <laughs> Is it Prime eligible? <laughs> Damn. Oh nice. shit! I don't see it there, but oh, it's it came up when I, when I was on the listing. Hold on. So anyway, for, for any good, great of you content not in. Uh, Dan has been working on his uh, his pet project oh. called Critical Fit. Yeah, it is no longer a pet project. It is now Damn. a full blown um, exercise program uh, in which incorporates elements of an RPG D and D style RPG into your workout, um, and it's super cool. And actually, last night we did a podcast on his channel, um, kind of just like a like a brewer's minute. Uh, talking about what we want to do with it and uh and we're yeah it's super cool the first supplement's going to be set in my D, &D world Oroch, which is if any of you are joining has been what we normally do on fridays took a break for the holidays last week and uh and this friday we wanted to do the uh end of the year stream since we sure did. we did a end of the year stream last year and it worked out so well 
<laughs> it worked out so shit show. Yeah, it was bananas. It was fun. It was fun. It was that. Until everyone left, and then I realized, wait, that was not. <laughs> and then, uh, I'm sure we left quite a mess for you to clean I up. Think that was, I think I showed it late to that, too. Yeah, every, did. almost everybody did. I remember peeking out all the microphones as soon as you walked in to the point where like it blew the fuck out of my speakers <laughs> oh, <I'm> so <laughs> when sorry. I was going through it again. <laughs> well, shit, man. We had, it was, it started off as you, Nikki, Dan, were you here from the start of that one? I don't yeah. Remember. Okay. So mm -hmm. I was here. Surprisingly, Patrick was here early and with Ashley and Oh, yeah. That was weird. Kevin I saw that. Right before we started, I think. <laughs> yeah. McCall and Misty showed up late. You showed up late. Did was, James? I think up? it was the, James. Was I think James was there? James was there. I think it was the last person. I think yeah. I think McCullough was the last person with Misty. Oh yeah, Probably. yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. Because McCullough sure. and I took turns with sitting on each other's laps. <laughs> yeah, we can fact check this, but we won't. Yeah. Who's um, <laughs> it's better just to remember backly or back on it fondly. True. And just just call it what it is. What'd you hit there, so, buddy? I hit shit. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, I'm actually really happy that it's not. Oh, my phone vibrated. Yeah, I'm glad that we're doing a podcast. I don't know. If I'm glad that we're just doing something. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. I'm actually pleasantly surprised that I've been getting a couple of Fridays off, and I'm like, oh man, D and D time, and then. We took some time off from D and D, and I'm Sorry. like, "That is totally fair. You deserve the time <laughs> off, buddy, because you have put so much time and effort into it, and letting us into our beautiful, letting us into your beautiful home in order to do these sorts of things." Well, well thank you for calling it beautiful. It is. It is gorgeous. Thanks. So let's. Uh, you want to go one at a time and yeah, talk about our years? Let's we'll start from the other side of the couch. Yeah. Oh, hey, Jenna, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> let's, uh, we'll what? start. We'll start with. Uh, do you want to start with good shit or bad shit? Because we could talk about both. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do start the, with the. Do you want to start with the good and with the bad? Yeah, it'll be funnier. I'll do <laughs> absolutely. I'll do a quick shout out before. I'll do an introduction for you. Oh. So, my 2017 was made better by you. You specifically. What did I do? Uh, you provided me with the last switch in Jacksonville, Florida, <laughs> on opening on, weekend. On launch, on launch, launch weekend. weekend. Yeah. Um, this is when you earned the stained glass window in my eventual house uh, of St. Eugenics, provider of switches. And Canadian gangster. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be you and your Vince Neal fucking <laughs> denim vest. And, 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 and holding a teams. switch. You're going to have a Joy-Con in them. each hand. A Joy-Con in each hand and the Switch floating in front of you. St. Eugenics, provider of Switches and maker of maker happy of Daniels. So, there will be a little thank you for, patch on his vest. I will, yeah, thank you for making my 2017 better. That is no problem. Because I didn't when I called them, I didn't think they were really going to save that. And I was like, I hope they do. Because they let me talk. It's like, yeah, I got you. It's all right, cool. Also, I got it. I'm like, oh, shit. Well, they, yeah, and then I called them, and they were like, you better get here soon. And then when I got there, they quadruple bagged it for me, so I didn't get shot walking out of the 103rd Walmart. Because you know what happened. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, they said that eight other people had called and said they were coming for it. No, nah, fuck the motherfuckers. Yeah, you can fucking find them everywhere. Yeah, isn't that, isn't that some shit? Until the lady who punched me in my arm hard as shit because she didn't have one the two days before Christmas. It's like, you're a dumbass for that. Because we had 300 of them in Best Buy. Like, like in just in yours? In my Best Buy. We had 300. Jeez. That's a lot of switches. <laughs> Every time I go to Target or Best Buy, I see them. So I don't think they're that hard to find. They're there was not, one at Walmart the other night. Yeah. But it's also the day before, two days before Christmas. That's her own fucking fall at that point. Like the whole shit was just yeah, empty. Yeah. When you know that so, it's a best-selling product hot, hot I, ticket i will say so the way kind of the paychecks fell like i'm bi-weekly which i think most people are mm -hmm. um i unfortunately i know not. yeah you're once a month <laughs> fucking once a month weird. damn so, so really? fucking so, dumb. Mm -hmm. i got paid today which is technically my january paycheck yeah. what so uh, oddly enough like uh how my paychecks fell is it's like my first paycheck landed and like I pay mortgage and then I pay like a majority of bills out of it. And then the next paycheck comes and that's kind of like my, my easy paycheck. So my easy paycheck landed like the Friday right before Christmas. So I can understand people being like, okay, now I have the money. to mm -hmm. go out. Yeah. Yeah. So if they're on like my rotation um, of paychecks, so 
only thing with that is that we've had switches in constantly since October. They have not gone on sale. Yeah. And I was like, I don't, I, people don't, I don't want to like question anybody it. because they might not have known that their kid or their grandson or their nephew or whoever it is who wanted the switch wanted That's it fair. until like two days beforehand. That's fair. And sometimes people just don't have the time to go out and get it. So it sucks that they weren't able to get what they're looking for, but she shouldn't have fucking punched you. That's that's stupid. Dude, I've gotten assaulted. I've had a lady, I've had a lady try to check me. <laughs> so an, an extended family member, uh, my my uncle's wife's father, uh, he like went to the phone store because his phone, he like went to Boost Mobile because his phone wasn't working. So you know like right away because he's going to a Boost Mobile store. <laughs> yeah, this is going to go... Uh, interesting. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting thing. Well, anyway, he fuck. They weren't even open yet, but he was raising cane and beating on the fucking window. <laughs> Lady came out and he said something to her. Apparently, she fuck got tired of his shit and pushed him over and broke his hip and leg. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, that look, know, they're getting must, sued. He must have said some fucking shit. He's a good old boy from Palatka, so I can only imagine what he said. So <laughs> I when, have been there. I know those good boys. I yeah, do too. Exactly. Those good old boys. <laughs> so when Johnny told me that, I was like, probably had it coming, and like I didn't mean to say it. I was like, That's his father-in-law. But, at the same time, I'm just like, oh, I had it coming. And like, everybody was like, <laughs> like, what the fuck? And I was just like, whoa, 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 hold on. For every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. Like, if you start some shit, there's going to be some shit. Don't if you work at Boost, Boost Mobile, <laughs> you probably don't give a fuck about your job. Don't start nothing, won't be nothing. <laughs> yeah. And like, they, they, like, he got served a, like, trespassing like notice in the hospital what? Like, like they were did like, he get a restraining order yeah, too exactly. oh yeah. man that's awesome he within a certain amount of feet so he must have said some shit i guess, I guess yeah. he's gotta he's gotta fucking move to metro pcs now what'd you just say? <laughs> he can't go into the boost store he's gotta go to metro now right. so he's Eugene, gotta get his unlimited 4g tell, tell us about your year yeah well, this was a good my love start with the, the good, good of start the with the this year. right here was an also part of my year it just happened <laughs> um, I guess a really good part of the year was definitely my me getting back to my old self because I went through some things in the beginning and I told Jared about and I got past that which was good so yay me because I might not have been here right now in this chair so that was good well, that is good I don't yeah, know the, I don't know the backstory of that but I'm glad you're here <laughs> so there's that um, I moved out which is good Hell yeah. The, it's always liberating, except on the wallet. Boy, <laughs> I got paid on Shanice's birthday. That shit went to bills and her. <laughs> so I was like, well, just got paid today. So I was like, I got Christmas done, though. Not for her, but for the little one. That's all that mattered. Mm -hmm. That's all that matters. So, and Christmas for the little one's the only thing that matters. Yeah. 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 Fuck, Christmas fuck for adults. Once you got them, that's, yeah. that's your Christmas. Yeah, that's, that's, that's like, what you do. So. This Christmas, I was trying to like buy Sparrow like, art supplies and stuff. Mm -hmm. Last year, I went fucking ham. I spent like yeah, five, I remember what you did. Bucks, got like all kinds of shit for Sparrow, and then she was just done with it like a week later. So I was like, that would it, yeah. I remember that because you were like, I was just pissing dollar bills into the wind. You ranted to me about that. I knew you were oh, yeah. pissed. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, charity stream was definitely awesome. Yeah, that was definitely part awesome. of the year. That was pretty fun. Yep, you guys have been an awesome part of the year, definitely. It's all yeah, the experiences. Well, I mean, well, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm definitely glad the last few years I've met you guys, because it's, it's definitely been awesome to actually have some some bros, some real bros. So I appreciate you guys. I'm thankful for you guys. It's good to know that all of us can be great friends, even though we don't see each other as much as we probably want to. Fair shit. For sure. Because that's definitely like when we get to the worst parts, that's definitely the worst part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad you guys are here and we're able to come to do this because it's fun. Yeah. Jared's D and D, which is Jared's amazing D &D fucking is story. Fantastic. I got a dream. Thanks, guys. That shit. <laughs> I had a dream. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm, yeah, I'm, cool, I'm, I'm gonna talk a lot about Jared's D and D when it gets to my. I'm gonna my leave it turn. to you then. Dude, but... it's, it's been unbelievable the feedback that I've gotten from you guys. I fucking. Been... I'm in love with it. I've had a dream about this shit. Like legitimately, I was like, holy, <laughs> woke up like sweating. I was like, holy fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like comforting you like what happened so we got into a comment situation like she I rolled like a two and it was terrible <laughs> she touched me and I jumped I was like oh 
and he remember, did. it was during the final battle with the king, and that's what got. Thought it was the branch raid, bro. You thought it was that time that we left you to fight like six fucking guys by yourself <laughs> while I was dire wolfing in he the was, corner. He's doing all right. Yeah. Hey, I took out some people. We, we almost was, died though. Shield bashing people. Ragnick for life, my dude. Yeah. But the that's... truest love story. Still a better love story. <laughs> anything is a better love story than Twilight. Anything else, anything else good happened for you this year? On to you, my friend. Oh, we're just moving on to me now. Yep. <laughs> First off, this hookah is delicious. <laughs> Great dank part. Hook. Dank, dank hookies, dog. <laughs> I mean... It's pretty obvious, like, the best thing that happened as much as, like, we sh give each other shit all year is I got married, and you guys yeah. were all there to fucking yeah. share that. That was fucking the coolest wedding I've ever been to. I before. enjoyed my fucking I'm glad, so like, much. that's the one thing that we were worried going into, because we, we know that me and her are good. As much as we, like, shit talk each other, he's got, he's got the coals going. He's got him going, and I got I got my little burner over there. He's good. I We're good to go. Know. I'm set up for you guys, man. Some hot, hot, some hot, hot coals. I got another hookah in the cold downstairs, man. I'm ready. Hot coals for we these hot boys. Hookah. Shout out we still Snake Boy 229. Snake Boy That's 229. Weird. At it again. Snakey. Um, anyway. <laughs> Jesus We're fucking God. obsessed with that channel. One of now. the best it's, parts of 2017 is obviously. It's obviously Nakey Jakey. 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 <laughs> yeah. If, if you're listening right now and you need to find a good bless. dog bless, a good YouTube slash gaming channel slash comedy channel, you should watch Nakey Jakey. He's hilarious. Purple Savior? Hey, no, it's not. It's Seven Wings, I think. Okay, yeah. Oh, fuckers. Seven Winged Angel. Yeah. Any, anyway. <laughs> ring, 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 ring. <laughs> Except it's in seven <laughs> eight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we were more concerned with just everyone else having a good time, friends and family being able. Like, I was hesitant about her se selection of a Sunday versus like a Saturday or a Friday. You weren't the only one. <laughs> I know I wasn't the I only listened one. Listened to everybody at least bitch once or twice about it. But at it's the true. same time, I'm like. <laughs> Weddings are always for the wives it's, most of the time. I mean, it's y'all's wedding. If you're happy, you're happy. Yeah. And everyone who was important to come out came out. So that's all that really mattered. And I'm glad that we're able to praise Dale and raise hail. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Dude. Okay. Best joke of 2017. James Greaser trading paint with baby Jesus. <laughs> and then immediately followed up by praise Dale. Raise, raise, raise hail. hail. Holy shit. And the fact that you got her father-in-law Dave who can sometimes be kind of a pain in the ass like depending on how much he drank and if <laughs> his two sons are around we had a good time with him. like I'm glad I'm glad number one he had a good time I'm glad number two he said jokes that were coherent and yeah. funny because typically he'll just like fucking just <laughs> green beans <laughs> 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 what does that even mean? Like we wa we were walking into a car and he just fucking blurts out green beans. I'm like, I don't, I don't. Is this palaka or something? Like I don't, I don't fucking get it. Palaka smells like green beans. I, said, so. I don't know. I'm from Green Cove, and but I don't then know about I would green actually, beans. I would actually want to be because I like green beans. But like, no, like stank green beans, like stank green beans, beans like that, burnt green beans no, that green have been beans. under no, the no, under like the light you too you long. boiled them and then left the fucking water on the stove for Ooh. like three days and oh. then drank it with ice cubes. Like, Oof. Oof. Green beans. <laughs> what are we doing? Anyway, reminding worst ourselves parts where of we came from. <laughs> Y'all see this face? Hashtag yeah. Hashtag salty. And some quality audio, gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's definitely gonna get picked up We're in the microphones. <laughs> I mean, I can go on about all the good shit that happened. Like as much as I complain about my job, that's gonna fucking vibrate. There it goes. Okay. Cool. Uh, I complain about my job a lot, but honestly, like I like what I do. So it's it's good to like actually have a job that I sort of care about and get paid to do. That's like funny. I get to go to New York tomorrow because of my job. And that's pretty cool. Have you been yeah. before? Was that? Have you been before? Yeah, plenty of oh, times. Okay. It's just I haven't been to New York City as an adult. The last time I that went was you. for a funeral when I was twelve. Fair so enough. So this should be fun. Yeah. yeah. Instead of going to Queens and burying my great grandmother and then hearing gunshots in the distance and saying, Well, we should leave before we join her. <laughs> True. <laughs> They're sounding off for it, bro. Yeah. yeah. Shout, <laughs> 21 gun <laughs> salute. <laughs> shout, out, shout out to Queens. Yeah, that's actually where I'm going to be, unfortunately. 
Uh, go hang out with my cousin. Yeah, They'll take Field. care of you. I mean, I'm only going to be in Queens to be at the stadium. But yeah. other than that, I'll be in Man- Manhattan, like Times Square. Okay, you'll be, cool. you be my cousin. My, my uncles and my cousins. They got you. They, okay, they got me. <laughs> they they're going to take me to car mines where I can do the family style, you know, They'll take Italian. You, they'll take you that's what you I'm, want to that's go what to. I'm going there for. Is to do family yeah. style Italian. The hot lasagna. Yeah. <laughs> Get the hot lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> don't, don't worry don't about it. Don't fucking worry about it. Uh, yeah, that's that's probably the best shit that's happened this year. Yeah. So, Dan, you're going to talk about D&D, so I won't talk about D&D. Mm-mm. But just know that I'm glad that you got me into d and I'm glad all of you guys got me into d and it was, it was, it was, it was something that was like dangled on a string with like David and Hannah. And mm-hmm. then it just never became to be until you were like, we're fucking doing a D and D thing. I've got a story. Let's go. Yeah. I've been waiting a, a fucking hot minute to play some D and D and have an epic story again. Yeah. So, uh, I know you humble and you don't like to talk about yourself, but I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody work as hard on the story and, and developing a world that you want to be in as much as I've seen from you. Thanks, man. It took a long time. Um, and it, it definitely, I'm still not where I want to be, but I just want to give a special shout out and thanks to, uh, to my old DM. And, uh, he used to be a very close dear friend of mine. Like he treated me like I, I saw him as like a father figure. His name is Frenchie. Um, so shout out to him. Thanks for, for teaching me. Yeah, everything. Your bottle and, is still here. It's downstairs. Shout out to Frenchie. Yeah. That's that's that hot boy Frenchie. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, we can't ape everything that fucking Nicky Jakey does. <laughs> Come on, it's gonna fucking well, copyright well, strike. When, 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 we're not, <laughs> when we're not funny ourselves, we have to take. Right. <laughs> Snake boy is gonna get all of us wiener dudes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> On that copyright, a strike. All right. I'm so sad so, that I don't, I don't know. Well, anything. we're going to watch well, a we'll, lot we'll of it after the podcast. We'll catch you up. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, is it my turn? Yeah, it's your turn. I'm excited. All right. So, the best of 2017. Um, are, we, are we splitting this? Are we talking about games and movies and stuff yet? Or are we going to come back around? We can come back around. Yeah, I, we'll I want to. Let's talk about, about personal. So, like personal yeah. life. Okay. Um, That's good. So, yeah, lots of stuff 2017. Uh, in late. 2016 early 2017 i had a cockamamie idea that i told these dudes about um after a podcast one night and i was like i'm gonna open a gym and it's gonna be like a fantasy themed gym for nerds and we were like "Uh, it might work and then i was like what if i make a fitness program for nerds and now uh as we were just saying, uh, my shit's being sold on Amazon Prime, my dudes. Like, that's wild. Uh, my name is attached to something on Amazon. Me and my wife's name. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, I presented it at a GAM show, and I did like a vendor event. I never thought I'd be able to do anything like that because I didn't think I had it in me. So standing in front of a bunch of people and selling, selling my stuff, hanging out with Nintendo reps and guys who are making sweet games and being considered like a peer. That's, that's pretty wild. Um, and like the feedback and the support from everybody like in this room, outside of this room, everybody who's picked up a copy had input on the way that the game works, um, input on story stuff, design, uh, just all kinds of stuff. I've been super, super humbled by the support that I've gotten and the feedback. And, um, it's, it really means a lot, especially given like recent events that I've got such a strong, there's no other word, but family. Uh, around me like you guys are the family that I chose and um, I'm really humbled by how much love you guys have shown me in the last year so that's that's a big deal for me also Jared I'll uh, pontificate a little bit on on Oroch <laughs> because d and I've done a lot of weird d and shit theme this year like <laughs> like uh, I've I've 
never thought I would do this because even as a self-loathing nerd, I never thought I'd get into into D and D is just a little much. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was I like, have to act and role play. No, I love role playing. It's just like I got to sit around a table and roll dice. <laughs> Final Fantasy. <laughs> so, um, once I got started, and I'd played before a little bit, like you said with David and Hannah, we played before, and yeah. I've, and I, I've understood that it's super fun. The first session of or rock and roll, I was like. Okay, we're we're at a solid like B plus, like I'm I'm getting like we're getting started. We're kind of feeling each other out. I'm like this is I think this is gonna be good. Second session, I fucking cried. <laughs> Boy, I was so upset. <laughs> um, not I feel like I found a creative, um, creative soulmate in Jared because we both been working on hashtag blessed. <laughs> hashtag, hashtag dog bless. Dog we, bless. We've been um, both working on these so worlds good. since we were children. So the world that's in critical fit is the same one that I came up with when I was like eight years old. And all of my stories and everything that nobody will ever fucking see <laughs> are set in this world. And Jared is brave enough and honestly just so competent at bringing it to life that it's like he's sharing a part of his soul with us and it's been incredible. So if you haven't watched or rock and roll and you're, you know, on the stream or you, you follow the meta villains, mm -hmm. you're fucking up. Like go back, watch all of those videos. Watch me get really, really upset <laughs> as I am wont to do and try to fight a dude over a fictional king that I knew for two hours. <laughs> I, after one of these when sessions, I'm text messages after the game. Hey, <laughs> hey, what? I just want you to know. Fuck that guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, when me and Jared I'm uh, wake up in bedtime text messages from Dan about him. Yeah. <laughs> hey, by the way, hey, by the way, fuck Nicodemus. <laughs> that guy sucks, dude. Our bromance started in that too. Yeah. It's it it started with the switch. And it yeah, just, fair. it grew from there. So yeah, best things of 2017 for me have all been role-playing game related, <laughs> which is fitting. Fair enough. Because I've been the RPG guy my whole life. So that's, uh, yeah, that's that's personal personal 2017. My, my name's on fucking Amazon, fam. This shit is crazy. We are here. On sale now. On Make sure to pick up a copy <laughs> if you haven't already. Critical fit. Critical fit dot crit dot fit dot org that's not actually what it is just look up critical fit on amazon and buy it yeah we lit critical critical fit on amazon buy it now yeah yeah if anybody has a uh as much as i don't like resolutions because i think they're kind of silly but if you have a goal for yourself that you want to get better and you need it need to do it in a more interesting way to keep you up with it this podcast is sponsored by Critical Fit. Yeah, it, is. <laughs> it is sponsored by Critical Fit. If you uh, if you go buy a copy of it now uh, on Amazon, we cannot offer a discount uh, because we paid full price for it too. So yes, we did. <laughs> Every, real friends pay fucking full price. Everybody in this room paid for full ass price. Yeah. And once this guy's again, trying to give me free shit. I'm like, you better humbled. fucking put that shirt back in that right. box, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Until I hand you a twenty dollar bill. <laughs> And there is a transaction involved. Oh, I need to actually get a Metavillain shirt for you tonight. They're all right in there. Sweet. You literally just take whatever I know, you want. I know. I keep saying that, and you're like, they're there. Just walk into my closet, you idiot. And I never <laughs> just walk into your closet. because It's fine. Idiot. It took me like three weeks to get you a keyboard, so. <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't even plugged it in yet. <laughs> as, is, as is the story. Adults. Yeah. Yep. So, so, you're up. Uh, I, good, good stuff. Good stuff, 2017. Um, I got married at the end of 2016, so going into 2017, uh, I I had a wife and like a new family all of a sudden, and it's pretty surreal. I mean, it's part of a, a big chunk of 2016 was that way as well because I uh, Savannah hurt her back, and so I just told her to stay home. So like I already felt kind of in, intertwined into the family. Uh, in that like that patriarchal role um 
and in 2017 just kind of kind of cemented it as I got married at at the the beginning of it. Um, and then my my son was born in February, so I'm like an actual dad now. So it's weird. I mean, you were a dad to all of us before, so yeah, it's fair. But now you've like spawned your own, who is yeah. like the most adorable thing I've ever seen in my life. Oh my he's, god, that baby! He's that a pretty bad. great kid. That's, that's like secretly my baby. I, I can't wait for him <laughs> to grow. Your up. obsession with that yeah. baby is like next level. I love well, that it's, fucking it's kid, gonna man. Be cool, because like as he grows up and as we all kind of not grow up but just get older. Cause this, Let's let's be real. This is as mature as we're getting, folks. <laughs> yeah, we've peaked. <laughs> Anytime Nikki looks at me, I'm like, I'm not getting any better. That's right. <laughs> you are so, stuck with this, ma'am. It'll it'll be interesting from uh, my my child's perspective to to watch. Is that me? Porkins kind of grow as well. Yes, that is Porkins. With, uh, with with you guys and see how he kind of interacts with with my friends because it's it's pretty pretty inevitable that there's there's going to be like an, an extra family dynamic mm-hmm. to my existing family um so yeah kid was born uh i gotta keep going with the good <laughs> you're like shit shit i'm running out <laughs> uh, we, we had a very consistent friday podcast that was really cool um we we decided at some point like we we gotta just push content and so i i decided if if i made that my thing because it was very difficult for me to have a kid a wife and a stepkid and like work as much as i do um and be able to like also kind of mix my schedule up with you guys because everybody has weird schedules except for me and and even then like i have my on-call week which is just hell uh Mm -hmm. so uh, I, I decided to kind of take the mantle on of like just doing a Friday night live stream every night. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I was like hoping that that would like usher in like more content or kind of bring us all closer together. It was interesting to watch it have the opposite effect. And uh, and I think that it was that way uh, simply just due to like the timing of everything. Like 2017 in general was just not it, it was a weird time for everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it got way better when I decided to actually make the Friday because I was like Friday night's my night so and if it's my night and I'm the guy who's basically producing it and, and running it and, and working as hard as I am on it um, I want to work hard on something I'm passionate about and that's what I really wanted to do so that's when I decided to do Auroch and do Dungeons and Dragons and actually have something that like I know every week I'll be just so passionate about because a lot of the stuff that we do and the meta villains like even this podcast or what we did yesterday I consider it like a break it's like a vacation from the rest of my life you know but the the mm-hmm. Friday streams were starting to feel like just another fucking thing mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. like another piece of my my workload and Work. I didn't want it to feel that way and now D and D is something I love working at because I'm passionate about what I'm I'm running so mm-hmm. and uh, and I'm I'm excited to finish this story arc. Um, and, uh, which, you know, it's, it's going to be a while. I'm already like planning for the next game and, uh, and I'm already like making plans for, for like what we'll do in between the breaks, between the arcs. And, uh, so it'll be, it'll be cool. I've got a lot of really, really awesome ideas for the meta villains themselves. And, uh, I think 2017 ending is the best thing about 2017. (laughs) So, because it's it'll be because you know I've I've decided that I'm not I'm not gonna make compromises in in 2018. So I uh, I guess now we'll transition to like the bad and we'll start from here and go that way because I don't want to follow Dan. <laughs> I don't I because yeah. you can't follow it up. Nope. So everything is minute comparatively. Exactly. So the bad uh, leading up to like the meta villains <laughs> and, and and keeping on it from 2017 to 2018. Um, I, I said earlier to Savannah, I, I said 2018 is like, it's our year where we, we either prove to ourselves that like we can function and do the villains, or we prove to ourselves that we probably shouldn't not do the villains. We should probably just be friends and hang out, do cool stuff with technology, but not actually like make this a thing. Because, uh, yeah. you know, that's 
that was like and, and it wasn't like a oh we're gonna do this or i'm leaving type of thing it's a no it wasn't like ultimatum stuff but yeah. this is like if we do the same thing we did in 2017 then really? why do we yeah. do this exactly so you know i i i think uh the bad is i didn't make enough compromises and i'm not ashamed or feeling bad about it but i didn't make enough compromises for the meta villains i think we could have definitely i, I could have pushed people and uh and definitely done things uh, a lot differently but yeah I'm, I'm excited for 2018 because i'm not gonna make as many compromises as i did in 2017 no matter what it costs me you know uh i follow this guy scott galloway on uh l2 and he tells like he he says um you know like success and what i have and my happiness in my life cost me everything in my youth like it cost my hair it cost me the good jobs quote unquote it cost me you know um it cost me girlfriends loved ones family you know and uh, and he's like you know it cost me sleep and uh you know we talked yesterday about a creator uh in silent hill and how mm -hmm. that dude slept underneath his desk for two and a half years to render everything when everybody was asleep at night and um i i don't know if i'll be able to do that <laughs> <laughs> but i i definitely agree that this is this is the year where i have to show myself i this is my sleep under the desk year i gotta i gotta do stuff whether it's professionally or with the villains if, if i want the villains to be my profession then i have to start treating it like it so i gotta start stop making compromises and that's and i'm not gonna like push that on anybody else either yeah, so it's it's on me. I mean, much like before, people who want to do this will show that they want to do it. For sure. You won't have to push or anything. It's exactly. just the people who want to do it will show up and do it. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. And I, I think by virtue, um, like when we're doing something really cool, like when we started doing D&D, &D, a lot more people showed a lot more interest because it was something I was passionate about and it was something I was doing really good. Even if like the, the audio setup isn't great, um occasionally sometimes it's good but other times it's it's just fuck garbage uh and that's just kind of how we'll, much time i have we'll get there yeah uh it, you know that that inspired a lot more people like nikki has one of the coolest fuck characters yes yeah, it does i'm in our D &D game. incredibly surprised that she took on to D, D as well as she did yeah that's yeah. it's been that's, that's probably that's one exciting. of the best. should i can i add that back to like the best parts about <laughs> yeah, 2017 man. is that we got into D and D, and then she got into D and D. So I'm like, oh shit! There's actually like something that we can sort of share. Not to say that like there aren't things <laughs> right. that we don't share because we have plenty of passions that we like together. But I feel like that this has always been kind of my world. And as much as I'm glad that it's still my world, I kind of still you still want them to be, you know, a part of it. Of yeah, course. you still yeah. want to be Aladdin it's, and Jasmine a part of your world or whatever. It's still, right. it's, <laughs> dude, it's so fucking cool to share a passion with a loved one. Like when you're both so fucking yeah. excited about it, it'd be really great. Like, there's always the wants and desires where it's like, I really wish there was this one video game that me and you can just like sit down and play yeah. with each other or against each other or whatever. But I don't know. Like, just discovering like even last night when we were playing Mario Kart that apparently no one can enjoy playing Mario Kart with me because they don't like losing. Boy, come get me. <laughs> you know what, you motherfucker. I'm telling you. Know what? We I'm get, not talking. I'm talking about down, people who down. normally don't play games. We we gotta we gotta okay. get to a point. <laughs> Where we're big enough to invite Logic on the podcast, <laughs> and he can fucking play you a Mario Kart, so that way we can find out who's better. I'm sure he probably is. I don't know, man. I, I think you can give him like, a run for his I'm money. okay. You're really good. I'm okay. I don't know. You have to understand that. Sad. Ernest just threw down a challenge. I, I think... I, Ernest, please do come over and play. Double like, Dash? please. Double Dash was my... You shouldn't have gone home. My jam. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you probably should you have shouldn't gone, have gone home. home. You should have just <laughs> fucking stayed and just been on the podcast. Um, hey, we, we had that tournament. I was ready. Yeah, uh, that, that's not like a slight towards you guys. Like when I play against like you and Smash, like and Bree, like there's obviously challenge. Like yeah. there's somebody, like if we're playing the N64 version, like I'm just not beating Bree. Period. Yeah, the room that room too hot. It that, is. That room that's Ernest's life. Sweating before you left. Ernest yeah. sweats in 30 degree weather. It's okay. Well, that's like me. He he sweats. Yeah, hard. I, I, I thought I sweated bad, but he was. Car fucking... He carries a handkerchief, and he has since high school. It's been. It's like a defining earnest. Jeez. 
Ernest, He's got like uh, Russian blood in him or something. Filipino man. <laughs> but anyway, true, Filipino that was Pinoy, <laughs> Pinoy Alps blood. I wasn't, I wasn't like trying to brag on skill or anything, but like when you compare my skill level to like yeah. Nikki's skill level, like it's going to be really tough for her to beat the computer, let alone try to beat me. Yeah, it's it's not a slight. And I don't know how to turn that part off <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I just play. Yeah, Porkins, you want to play Smash? No, mm. I don't know. I, I, I didn't know play Porky Thirty played Smash. I, I mean, we can play some Smash, man. <laughs> like, we got we got melee. Y'all, we can make can this happen. Challenges. I I just fucking play Roy and just fucking shit post with holding B all day. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll fucking knock. Down, people. You're like, I'll knock my I'll map. knock myself out before That's I kill right. anybody. I will fucking rage with that guy. Yeah. So to uh, to speak to you about compromises, this is uh, an interesting situation because. I uh, was out of the meta villains and now I'm back in. <laughs> you never Just were. Out. I wasn't. You wouldn't they, they they pulled me in, right in, back in. My in. eyes. I never left. Neither you nor James really left. Mm-hmm. No, there was just a philosophical difference due to miscommunication. It wasn't With ever. Shock. Welcome to the meta villains. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to a bunch of welcome to online antisocial. Yeah. yeah, antisocial people trying to communicate via text. It's yeah. not. Well, it was March. Facebook so, messaging. Yeah. Yeah. To put it in like a person nobody knows that james left the villains i don't think because i never i actually specifically said on right before we went to stream because you guys didn't weren't really there for it but i initiated um what we called a huddle oh, so yeah. right before every podcast we were doing a huddle at my place which yeah. is basically like you're either green which means you're ready to go nothing's holding you back and you're 100 percent prepared Yellow, something's holding you back from being able to operate at performance or to be able to be an optimal personality on the podcast. And maybe you shouldn't be there. And maybe we need to talk to you about being on the podcast for the sake of itself and for the sake of your own mental health or physical health. And then we have red, which means, you know, shit is not good. You are certainly not at a level where you could perform. And, you know, we definitely need to be stopping you before you go out on camera. Because we've been in situations where we've been read and we've gone into a podcast and it hasn't been good. Right. And I wanted to both avoid that for the sake of not just our content, but for like the sake of our friendships and in general. So, so Death Sparks XX904 said, Jared, we need you back at FNM. Yeah, me too. I, I want to be back at FNM. And I'm actually building modern decks and I'm going to be competing in modern and legacy events in Jacksonville all through this year. I'm not going to stop. That's another goal of mine. Is Hell to yeah. Yeah. Go for I it, just sure. want to learn Commander, so let's just do that. I have like eight decks built together. I just... They're all good. They're all fun. Um, I think I gave my stuff to you, didn't I? I think once I, I think we were going to start, and then you, you stopped playing yeah, for a I've, while. I've got, I have a ton of Commander decks already built, and I didn't actually like Commander for a long time, and then I realized it's just a great casual format. Yeah. So I can just play with friends. I have Now I have so many decks built. Like, I could show up to the largest room of meta villains and we could all sit down and play with the deck. Oh, sure. Yeah. If you don't know who that, did you not know who that person is? I did not is? know who it it's was. Tim. Oh, Tim. Hey, man. Your <laughs> beard is finally more epic than mine now. It's fucking <laughs> glorious. Oh, God. Poor uh, but yeah, 20, 2017 was just, uh, 2017 was, was weird. I've, I've worked way too much this year and, uh, I'm, I'm hopeful for 2018. I've already told my job, um, that they're 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 gonna lose me this year, so it's it's like, like period or like you're just it was pulling a, yourself back. It was a pretty epic. Uh, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not gonna say what don't say uh, it. Yeah, yeah, what I what I said to to work, but basically I was I was in a meeting with my director, my boss's boss's boss, right? And uh, and I basically said, look, um, I'm giving you this is what I need to make in order to stay here, and this isn't a bargaining chip. This is what I need to make to stay here. You're lucky. And I said, I was going to ask for this, but realistically, this is just what I need. And that's your Christmas present. You're welcome. <laughs> um, and uh, He issued the all tomato. Yeah, I did give them the ultimatum, which is I'm... The I'm, all tomato of all tomatoes. Yeah, I said, after, after <laughs> once this year begins, <laughs> if I don't have an offer letter, uh, I'm immediately looking for a new job. So, and I am going to be pulling back as soon as that occurs. And mm-hmm. if you don't make me the offer of this, then I'm going to pull back 
uh, I will work for exactly what I'm working for right now, except I'm going to put in my contract that I'm not very on call and that uh, I'm only doing one sphere of my work. I'm not going to be doing the extra spheres that they tacked on um, as of recently. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's you know, I'm, I'm really, I just need to make the life choices that are going to allow me to survive and have a fun production. <laughs> it's going to allow you to survive everything else. Yeah. Because... If you didn't like, if you didn't have a family, you didn't have a wife, you didn't have a child, you didn't have, have us. A fucking job. Like that job would still kill you by itself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I would have quit a long time ago. I would never have stayed with the company. I would have, I would have taken the experience and I would have just walked to another job where it was like way more comfortable and easy. Because like I've been in, I've been doing what I've been doing for like a year and a half, and now I'm a senior level in that position now. Like that's how much experience I have. Mm. Just from the job. Like I put more hours in, in a year and a half than most people put in, in like four years on that job. So I'm, I'm like a senior level. So it's, uh, yeah. Aside from being like ground into a pulp and all that other stuff through work, it's, uh, I I'm really hopeful to see what, what 2018 is or kind of for the, for the first time I'm like looking optimistically at a year. Cause I kind of have that like same look, the future you have especially for like january everybody's like oh i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this my life's gonna get better new year new me like no nah, <laughs> not really um like it's it's every day is a new you so long as you're you're working to be actively better than the day you were or the you you were yesterday problem is like the me i was yesterday put in like 14 hours and the me i am today is gonna put in 18 hours and uh, like the me in a week from now is not even gonna remember the last time like i enjoyed myself so that uh, that has to end, and the and the meta villains have definitely, especially getting into my passion project of D and D, has been super fucking helpful. It's been therapeutic, yeah. mm -hmm. and sure. now I'm like super fucking excited <clears throat> to not just have that, but also do supplementary content. Like I really want to get back into the podcasts, but instead of making them, um, we make the time format random in terms of like when whatever we're we're going to be doing stuff. You should smoke some talking. Um, like yes, sir. When a movie it's comes the best out, thing he's ever said. Yeah, best thing of 2017. Best thing of 2017. Jared Pass. Jared Pass. <laughs> My boy and uh, <laughs> Chief Jared passing it along. That's right. Um, oh, fuck, I forgot what I was gonna say. And now you're done. So now, I want now to you're fucking back, Apparently, it's, it's like you're psychologically, good. my brain just like no, no, you the, don't remember crash. anything. Take it back. Yeah, yeah we should no, we should get into nuts and we should get into nuts and bolts, like what our plans are after we. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, uh, I thought we, that's we, what we can, we're gonna end up talking about. Yeah, it's like, for sure. Yeah, not only the state of the meta villains, but like the state of us on a personal level. Like, yeah. Again, I don't mm. like resolutions because they they always seem to be set up for failure, but having. Your anal glands are splaying this foul-smelling liquid. I would, I'd probably check your username to make sure uh, you're okay. <laughs> um, juicy glands. Yeah. Ooh, whatever. Tasty. That just lost my train of thought. Thanks a lot. I should stop looking at chat. Yeah, yeah look, I'll, I'll look at chat now. <laughs> okay. Okay. But uh, yeah, well, let's get into the nuts and bolts after. So is it bad time now? It's, it's, it's your bad, bad, time. bad time. Oh boy. You don't. Uh, I'm gonna. You don't have to talk about it if you're not comfortable. It's in a, in a public setting. Talking to us, I know you are, but in front of a camera on a microphone. Nah, man, it's what it is. Good, it it is going to. Yeah, so we'll get into it. So when we said end of the year podcast, he knew what he was getting into. Yeah. So um, earlier this month, my mom passed away. Um, it was incredibly difficult um, because. And this is going to be the dumbest shit, but I'm sure some nerds out there will understand. My mom didn't get to watch Star Wars. Um, and that was our thing. Like, we we watched every single Star Wars in the theater. She showed me Empire Strikes Back when I was but a wee child. It was one of my first movies, and it's one of my... It's, like, my favorite. If you were going to ask me what my favorite movie was, it's a, it's a toss-up between Pan's Labyrinth and Empire Strikes Back. So it's, like... You know, and and the Terminators in there too. We've we've gone over this in some uh, some casts, but um, she uh, it was really tough. She missed Thanksgiving because uh, she was in the hospital and things got real bad. And then she ended up 
passing and it was a very, very difficult time. She uh, didn't get to see Crit Fit um, fully realized. Uh, the book came in like the three days before it happened. And uh, it was, uh, it's, the more I talk about it, the easier it gets to talk about. But um, moving on, it is, it amplified everything that I hated about this year, which was me procrastinating and not fulfilling my own promises to myself. And if I had done everything that I said that I was going to do when I said I was going to do it, that book would been, have been released. There would have been a copy on that bookshelf and she would have had it in her hands before any of this even happened. So it put a lot of things into really, really stark per, um, perspective of don't waste your damn time sitting around making excuses, making compromises uh, for things that you shouldn't be making compromises on. If I had done what I said I was going to do, it would not have hurt so bad. And that comes down to doing your work, devoting time to your passions. It comes down to um, spending time with your family. And like I said earlier, you guys are the family that I chose. Um, the family that I didn't choose, I neglected because of my struggles with my family's lifestyle. And, you know, everybody can relate to that. And some, like, everybody's got that shithead uncle, you know, like everybody's got, you know, that, that, that struggle that you have interpersonally with, with your blood. And I let that rule me. And when we all came together after it happened, I realized how much I really enjoy being around them and that it was stupid for me to ever do that. And it made me, that was another thing, the love that was shown to me by this group, um, Michael, you know, shout out, you're not here, but you especially, um, was very heartwarming for me and was exactly the support that I have needed in the last few weeks, uh, means a whole hell of a lot. And, um, it made me realize that I need to spend more time with you guys and quit making excuses. I'm not too tired to fucking hang out and talk about video games. I'm not too busy to spend time with my best friends. Um, because you never, ever, ever know what's going to happen. And that's your after school special from the fucking meta villains. <laughs> uh, take care of your fucking business, dude. You don't know. You don't know when it's coming. You know, I never thought this was going to, I never thought this was going to happen. So I spent my time fucking procrastinating and doing bullshit instead of what I should have been doing. Watching too many damn videos on YouTube instead of writing my book. And when I sit down and wrote the damn book, it wasn't, it didn't take that damn long. <laughs> That's the worst part. Just fucking do it. Just set the time, make yourself do something. It's not that hard. Whatever you think is difficult, it's not that difficult. Just do it. It's weird, the, the blocks that we set up for ourselves in our, our lives. I mean, you yeah. know, I've been lying to myself for fucking, since we started the MetaVillain saying, I, I'm just not a not an editor i'm not an editor i can't i'm just that's not the way my brain's wired blah 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 bullshit yeah i can edit anybody can edit like and and what's really funny and interesting about it is uh watching funhouse actually just taught me that like here you are you have all these fucking creatives and every single one of them even though they have an office they have all this space they're like behind the camera even if they're not on it fucking editing something doing something like Bust an ass. I was like, yeah, I was like, if that's what you want, man, you gotta everyone likes to give the credit to the people on the camera. Like yeah, they all they all no, edit still. Nothing but to fucking do with that person. The heroes of that are guys yeah. like Barry. Or like yeah, who's not with who's not with Game Grumps that's anymore. Right. Fucking but like what? guys like John Smith, guys like yeah. fucking Jacob, guys like Don who work for Funhouse and you know, shout out to everyone else who edits for them, but they're the ones who make the magic happen oh, when it comes to these videos and the work that they put in to make the back end shit happen. Yo, yeah. yo, real talk. What happened to Barry? Barry quit uh Game Grumps. He's doing his own thing now. 
Yeah, I think he's gonna start doing kind of what he was doing on. Um, Reef. Did you ever watch his Grump Out video? That he Those did? were the um, best things. They were. They actually were. They were some of the best. They reminded me of like the old sequelitis content that Ego Raptor used to. Except, except good. On. You, I'll fight you. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. <laughs> Sequelitis was great. I think that Barry is a much better personality to be doing that style of video. Um, uh, okay, so I Aaron's stupid and and so am I, and that's why I like Aaron's content because I'm a stupid person, I guess, and it meshes with me. But Barry's super smart, and I think you're super smart, and so I, I think. When when Barry delves into it, it's 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 a lot fucking smarter, and I agree that Grump Out content that he did solo was fucking pristine. Yeah, and he only did like two or three videos for it, but each one of them were were excellently made. Number one because he's a fantastic editor and he knows how to put shit together, but yeah. he was also entertaining enough and silly enough to bring the funny to it. And making entertaining 15 or 10 minute video about a topic yeah that sometimes you just don't even think about like he did a video on skyward sword and he just talked about the color palette that's yeah. all he oh, talked about clouds. yeah he was just like why is this all fucking drab why can't it why can't this shit fucking pop yeah i remember that video okay and then he did yeah. another one based on like what the fuck is this term immersion that we like to use for video games so he's like he's like the the nerd writer of of fucking yeah, except not up his own ass. Yeah, definitely not. As much as up his own ass as nerd writer is, I still enjoy his content. Yeah, moving on. <laughs> Sustained overrule. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Worst parts of 2017, nerd writer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll get there. Uh, so I'm I'm done with sob fest. What do you got? I don't even want to follow you, man. <laughs> hey, man, shit happens. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. It, like I said, it put a lot of things in perspective for me. But I try to see all the positive aspects. Like, don't waste your fucking time. Right. So, but those those things that you have discovered because of your tumultuous month that you had to go with, go through are all the things that I thought were like the worst things of 2017 for me. Mm. Uh, I struggled a lot with feelings of like seclusion and isolation. Mm -hmm. I'm in a house with a, a wife who loves me and I love her to death, but sometimes you just need that sense of community, like that sense of family. Like there are more people than just one person because as much as she tries, she's not going to be able to fill that hole. Yeah. Um, so especially in the last couple of months, because of my job being, Nights and weekends, I work a completely opposite schedule than everyone else. The fact that I have a Friday night off is mainly due for the fact that I have a flight tomorrow at 7 a.m. And they at least have a courtesy to not work me the day before I leave, which I guess is cool. Um, but not only not able to see you guys at all or as much as I would like to, uh, that social life part of me just kind of faltered and died. And because of that... I faltered in myself in not pushing harder to hang out and to make plans because right. once you get stuck in that rut, mm -hmm. you don't want to reach out because you're like, uh, no one's going to be fucking available on a Tuesday at 12 PM because I just know this. No one's going to make time. Even when I have time, I don't feel like making time. I should be the one who like gets contacted because of my crazy schedule and putting that onus on everyone else instead of just saying, you know, hey, do you guys want to fucking do something? Well, seclusion is like, it's terminal and it's progressive. Yeah. Like, it, it, if you do nothing, it will consume you. Welcome it, to 2017. It will take everything from you. And yeah. it's, it, it's like depression almost. I gotta I got say, um, sorry to cut you it's off, Jared. No, um, that's it. No, it's just that. There's, there's different personalities when it comes to depression and seclusion and this is your meta villains real talk once again yeah um always happens when you and i are in the same podcast <laughs> so um my personality is very much i'm not going to handle this if i'm by myself so i'm going to surround myself with people constantly and you guys have been awesome about accommodating me because if i'm alone bad things happen 
So I constantly am reaching out to be, I'm quite the opposite. When I feel bad, I need to be with somebody. Yeah. As, instead of going, uh, I just, I'm going to be alone because of it's the a, way it's, I feel. It's perpetuating. It's yeah. Because uh, I feel alone. I continue to be alone instead of digging myself out of that rut. I just constantly just go further and further into the void mm-hmm. and like, don't do anything a value even with that time that I have. Cause then I just sit here fucking watching YouTube videos or mm-hmm. looking at all the things I could be doing and then not actually doing something, yeah. not being productive with the time that I have, uh, in creating something or even reading something or watching a show that I want to watch or watching a movie I want to watch, just doing something with the time. Instead, I just sit in that chair in front of those monitors and just kind of stare back or stare into a monitor that's not really staring back at me. It's a, it's a, it's a big feeling yeah. of emptiness that oh. kind of, I didn't feel it that much until like October when like my schedule started kicking up. So the last few months of like, honestly, out of everything this year, only the last few months have really felt like kind of negative in, 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 a, in a way. Yeah. Summer was good. I mean, obviously I was married. I got yeah. married earlier this year. All of that was great, but that was probably that was probably well, the worst part, honestly. I think the worst part for you is that it blinds you to how great you are. Because if you're sitting here feeling bad about yourself, we watched one of our old meta villains videos that you had edited, and it's fucking genius. I'm still laughing at this shit. Like we're That's probably the best piece of content we put out in 2017. Yeah. There's <laughs> Was it 2017? Was it? No, yeah. it's probably the end of 2016, I bet. Right? Who cares? No, it was the beginning of 2017 because okay. okay. that's when I went to go do that. I remember the okay. shirt I was wearing. It just did like an event. So, um, okay. Yeah, I, 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 that, the way you get this story right going down, that was, a idea. That was uh, February. So, sure. Um, take your word for it. When, yeah, when you look back at that stuff and you realize like how dope you got at editing and creating and stuff. And you're so far in this hole that you can't even appreciate the things that you can do. That sucks because it's just, you're fucking great and you can be awesome if you let yourself, but it's, you know, it's not that simple. No, it never, it never is because It starts off with the feeling of seclusion and then it goes into why do I even do anything with my time? I don't want to do anything with my time. And then starting to have even like the self doubts that I know that are ridiculously stupid and being like, nobody actually wants to hang out with me, which is like, that's the most dangerous when you, when you say that out loud and when I say that out loud, I know that's not true, but your mind tells you it's true. Of course. I mean, your mind is it tells awful. you it tells you Especially in the most insidious ways. The more intelligent you are, the worse your mind is. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Uh, unfortunately, you're you read into situations much more than you honestly should. Yeah. And when you, for example, like text somebody and you don't get a response for like an hour, like normally, if you're in an okay mind space. You're not thinking like, oh, they're, they're probably busy. It's no big deal. Yeah. But when you're in a bad space, like I was, you're sitting there just like fucking beating yourself up. Like, why the fuck would this person ever want to text me back? Why do they even text them in the first place? They're too fucking like, they're clearly like, hanging out with everyone else. Like everyone else is, is over there. Yeah. Why the fuck would they want me over there? You're like, uh, well, I guess I'll just go fuck myself then. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, I feel that. Yeah. And it's poisonous. It leads to, to a lot of bad thoughts on both sides too, because you know, on the other side, you're, you're, you're in a, in a space where you're like, man, everybody's having fun without me. And we're all like, man, I wish Chris was <laughs> out here. What's he that's, doing? That's funny. That's exactly what yeah. we said yesterday. Like we were just like, wow, we need fucking Chris over here. Like the whole time. <laughs> Literally. I saw that critical fit went live and I was, and I went to it and I was like, Oh, he's probably doing like another thing where he's talking about his book or whatever. And then I see, your face on it, Jared. And I'm like, what the fuck, man? Why the fuck are they hanging out? And then I'm like, wait, wait, wait. He said he was doing this. Let's not get all butthurt about it. But again, that's the danger. That's the danger of where my mind was taking me for the past couple of months. That's how it is works. Is that I would read into these situations like it was something personal See, when it's not. That's why I douse my brain cells in alcohol so much. 
No, I'm serious. Like without alcohol, my anxiety. I yeah, fucking calm. Quit. I would have actually yeah. myself a long time ago, and that that's like serious. Like if if I have like that super sobering thought of like I don't know if this is worth it. I don't want to be here. I'm just like time to drink. Yeah, and because drinking makes me miss you guys. Yeah, I want to be with you. <laughs> <laughs> instead of feeding into that like right you know like i might get depressed when i'm drinking sure but at least i don't have that anxiety telling me i'm not good enough yeah for the friends i have i don't have alcohol which i could have alcohol but my my solace is 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 definitely my wife who like understands where my headspace is at and knows that while she could do a lot to like try to pull me out of it and like try to get me to do something she understands that she's not going to be the the savior of it all, but then she'll just be like the the voice of reason. Where, it, like for example, this was like Christmas Eve, like right before right before I went to my parents, we went over to your house. But like I texted you in the morning because I saw James came over for a workout or whatever, and I texted you like, "Hey, if you guys want to get breakfast with us this morning, like we'll wait so that way we can all hang out for Christmas Eve." Didn't get a response for like three hours, but then she texted you and she got a response and I was in, it's all timing and again. Uh, the smart side of me is like, he just probably didn't see it. I've had my iPhone not show me text messages before. Like crazy shit has happened. Well, it's like, you it's look whatever. At something and you're like, I'm working out. Let me get back to this. And then you're like, you don't yeah. have that. Phone you can easily like, you, you can to get back to this. And then all of a sudden yeah. you hear ding and you're like, oh shit. And exactly. Like, oh. But then exactly you become, what happened. But then you become that yeah. crazy, ex, like that crazy ex-girlfriend who's like, he has fucking read receipts. That bitch. He hasn't even fucking read it. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I had a similar situation where you, you texted me when I was at the doctor and they were like getting me ready for like for surgery. Right. And, uh, and so like I have my shirt off and like and then I'm, I'm also like bent over and i'm like reading your text message i'm getting like an antibiotic shot in the ass and uh it's the first <laughs> but, time i've ever gotten a needle in the butt turns out it's not as bad as everybody says like i i've i've heard people tell me it's like the worst it feels weird i don't i didn't that's about it I was just like, didn't bother. It's, it's like a shot it's just a shot whatever a yeah. tetanus shot felt just as bad and that's in the arm i don't it's all relative i don't know people are existence is pain whatever move on yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> um and uh yeah i was just like uh i'll get back like i oh, really man, didn't want to talk about me being sick or like being in pain especially in that moment so i was like i'll get back to chris and i like never text you back oh man but like i knew that was happening yeah like i saw savannah's post so mm -hmm. i was like oh he's probably at the fucking doctor yeah. getting his shit checked out i i was i actually was like when when I started getting text messages, I was like, I really wish I hadn't even told her how bad it was. Yeah. Because, like, I don't want her to, like, make my friends or her or herself get worried. Because, like, I'm not worried. And, like, that's the thing is, like, if I'm not worried, you shouldn't be worried. Trust me. When I'm worried, I'll let you know. That was my you – know? that's why I didn't contact – I saw the post and I was like, you know, if Jared wants to talk, pretty sure he's going to hit me up. <laughs> Like, yeah. and let me know if something's going down. And that's also been like, I've been in the same mental headspace to where I've been kind of in a fog and not responding to things sometimes because <laughs> if there was a time that maybe I didn't text you back, I might've been face down in a pillow. <laughs> so, Fish it. but at the same time, it's, it's scary to me because I feel like people have not wanted to tell me things because of, well, how the fuck am I supposed to follow that? Especially recently. I mean, yeah, that's where my again that yeah. uh, that builds on exactly how I was feeling already. Because yeah. Nikki was like, "Well, why don't you just tell Dan how you feel lately?" Because yeah. it, it it was turning into some like really bad shit to the point where it's like you had everybody over for football, and Ernest was the one who saw us and was like, "Yeah, you should come over and watch football with us." Like doing my bad Ernest impersonation. <laughs> and my thought is always, "Well, Chris will probably text and say if he wants to come over," but I always presume that you and Nikki are spending time together. Because, yeah, we don't we don't have to do this right now. But I always assume that you know I live next <laughs> again, door. If you want to come like hang out, what happens when there's no communication? There is miscommunication. Yeah, yeah. turns but, out, uh, yeah. So going, going so. back to what happened earlier this year when James kind of left the Meta Villains on a on a particularly bad note. <laughs> 
Admittedly. <laughs> for, for, first off, Ernest, I'm sorry. I know you're in the stream and I just like <laughs> impersonate your voice. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, we both have nasally voices. Yours is just more I don't know. I like your I like yours better. I mean Can you stop. I didn't know I didn't notice it at all. So I don't how does it <laughs> what? Have you ever tasted that 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 Reebok sock? <laughs> Oh, Does boy. it taste good? No. Because you should probably put your fucking foot in your yeah, mouth. Yeah, I'll stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what was cool was I was just like, well, cool, I guess I'll just go fuck myself then. And like that was how I felt. I was I was not happy. And uh, just because I felt like I was a parent, I was like, I thought I was being funny and then didn't perceive that I was being an absolute shithead. <laughs> to not come across funny. Unfortunately, I thought it was hilarious. I know. Apparently if if not. you had said it to my <laughs> face, I probably would have understood. So, but the internet sucks and is the bane of all human communication. Yeah. So. Well, me and James talked for fucking hours. We hung out afterwards, mm -hmm. and we had like, like we we talked. There's like a lot of stuff going on with with both of us, and you know, I. To me, my humor is kind of almost cruel i guess in a way is what i realized and i have to be kind of sensitive to that 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 that, that my my humor comes is is very dark uh so <laughs> and <laughs> yeah exactly not as dark as me <laughs> uh and yeah it was oh, hi. it was <laughs> it was really good to actually communicate with fucking with james and just sit down and fucking talk for hours and then like by the time we left it felt like we were like fucking brothers like closer than we'd ever been right but that's the thing with james is like i don't feel like he ever like is completely done with anybody it's just that just was even he admits it in in further conversations where it was just kind of like a rash moment for him too he has a very like strong moral code that we've kind of talked about like our conversation yesterday about hurting uh cultures in the the honor culture honor that, culture versus a dignity culture yeah that is james 110 percent. if somebody even his closest friend does something that besmirches his idea of what would be like an honorable move or like a dude move yeah. he'll just be like oh you're done and see that that's we talked about it too because yeah i i feel very akin to that that honor culture as well and uh when we were talking about he basically was just like i i misperceived your action entirely because you were just doing what you felt was both correct and funny at the same time. Mm -hmm. Which, this all started because my wife made portraits of everybody. And she was like, should I post the portraits? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, okay, well, give me another couple hours because I didn't make everybody else's. And I was like, no, oh, just make everybody who's been on a podcast in the last two months. Like the, the Friday podcast. Sure. Yeah. And she was like, really? And I was like, yeah, it's fine. And she was like, well, is that going to piss anybody off? I was like, no. I was like, I mean, <laughs> they can't care. They're not here. I was like, when they show up, we'll get them a portrait. And she was like, I guess that makes sense. So, like, I kind of, like, somehow railroaded her into thinking it was a good idea. <laughs> and then she posted it, which probably made it ten times worse. Like, if I would have just posted it and made a joke about, like, like if you want a portrait show up, you know, it probably would be completely <laughs> different. But it's really weird that that is an argument that... <laughs> The curd. Yeah. I, is, I thought it was funny and I got it when I saw it. I was like, oh, okay. And I saw everything else. I was like, oh. This is a oh this is human <laughs> This is <That's> human <laughs> drama. Yeah. Like this is fucking mean like, girls in real life. Like Kevin Remember when this McColo, was our concern? Yeah. Like Kevin texted McCullough and was like, Am I having a reference? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker, you show like, up for one podcast a year. <laughs> I was so Holy like, shit. What is like, that? Real serious. Hold on. Somebody just posted War and Peace in the chat. Oh, God. I can read it out loud for you. Okay, please. From Redblaze78. I don't know who you are, but thanks for stopping by. If it makes you feel any better, one of my mates once pissed me off. I got up at 2 a.m. in the morning and posted his number on several Omegle chats. <laughs> and I posted, I am a 16-year-old girl looking to rate men's dot, 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 dot. Send me yours and I'll send you mine. Homie got over 100 texts of penises at 3 a.m. in the morning. So I know how, I know the feels. He had to change his number because people wouldn't stop sending him dick pics. <laughs> oh, shit. Dude. Okay. That's actually like, it's not funny to the person this you is did like, it to, but that's funny. This is like oh, the plot God. of one of those Reddit posts. Right. Like, 
<laughs> our <laughs> accidents. Like today I fucked up. <laughs> yeah, today I fucked up by posting my dude shit on a meagle. Oh, oh man, man, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing. That's amazing. That was, yeah. <laughs> I, I did one time, it kind of reminds me, and then we'll go to Eugene, I swear, I'm sorry. I've tangent it so hard. So there, like there was all these this, fucking white people. My, uh, my friend Daryl <laughs> left his, uh, he left his Facebook open. Yeah. My friend oh, Leah yeah. and I were hanging out. Yeah, Daryl. And oh. uh, fucking Leah went on his computer and set him up with a um, a grinder account. Nice. Via the browser and like LinkedIn, his profile. I thought you were about to say LinkedIn, his LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> like the, made his like homepage back when you could like have like a homepage, like another website tied to facebook yeah it, it was like linked to his uh his like like gay plenty of fish account and, like his grinder account and everything and he like she said his like you know orientation and all this other stuff and uh and i thought it was hilarious and i thought daryl was gonna get a fucking kick out of it and i like when he got there <laughs> turns he, out he did not he got let, like let, a million let me fucking see the, messages let me see the chat. Go on. and was just like you tied it to my real email and now they won't stop. I was like, I'm so sorry. That that's kind of rough. I yeah. ain't gonna lie. Funny though. Ugh. That's why you always have like two or three email accounts. Boy, ain't that right? Yeah. That way you can just move on to the next one. Hey, yeah. So, yo, what's up, Rick Breath? Let's go, Rangers, baby. Yep. So, so go on, Eugene. Worst worst parts of the year. Um, I had a lot of issues that you guys had actually. Where it was extreme anxiety extreme depression um i isolated myself a lot which i came to jared for a lot of it and i talked to jared a lot but even i stopped even going to jared's house because i felt like i was bothering him and that's my biggest issue is that i feel like i'm bothering somebody so i leave myself to my own stuff i never want to be a burden to anybody because when i grew up i was always a, always seemed like i was a burden to my mom and dad so that was one mm. thing i never wanted to be that's even something i go with me and my mom went to therapy even this year and that was like a big thing mm. um in january i almost committed suicide and i was really close it if it wouldn't have happened the way it happened i definitely wouldn't be here so you guys definitely hopped in a lot of ways which you guys would probably never know well you know now but so i thank you guys for that and i'm just really glad we made it all through the year. yeah Sounds like this year was. I'm glad I got. To, <laughs> I'm glad I got to see dope ass Eugene show up to my wedding. Oh my god! With like the flyest outfit possible. Oh my god! <laughs> show, showing up <laughs> and like, you have to understand like it was all of a Palaka family on her side, and then like mm -hmm. my very conservative white family on the other side. They were staring at you hard <laughs> for multiple reasons, but I would I would like to assume that it was because of the suit. And oh man, you are a light in my world. So don't don't ever, don't ever fade out, dude. I appreciate that. Okay, but <laughs> hey, man. But it's it's real. I love I love all Definitely. of you guys, and that would I would not be doing this if it were anybody else, to be honest. So appreciate it. Definitely. It was it was it's been a rough year. Definitely. I even I dived into it a lot, even recently, to where I had to get myself out of it, and I was like, I I can't do this, and. I love you guys. I do. I appreciate all of you guys. Even within like my relationship with my parents, the lady, stuff like that. It was rough because there was a lot of things going on with, with her and me that were, were really like that. Those instances where like you were like, what are they doing? Like, because they didn't text me in an hour, there was actually might have been something happening right. within an hour. So that was the biggest thing for me. Um, I got through a lot of it. Still rough patches, but I'm definitely better where I am. I'm going to start therapy again i thought i started medication in august and i couldn't things happened especially with the hurricane like i couldn't go back and actually go back to my doctor and like talk to him and stuff like that so i'm gonna start that back yeah, up again for the sucks. year but um i'm better definitely and you guys helped a lot so i thank you especially jared you were there for a lot and i talked to you about a lot anytime man so thank you man yeah you my phone is always <laughs> on i may not answer immediately <laughs> As evidence. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I said, man, I was, I don't want to be a burden to anybody. And that was the biggest thing is like being a burden to like, even Jared knows, like I stopped, we really, besides podcasts, we didn't talk. And we, I was talking to him like almost every day. Right. Yeah. So. I mean, I, I definitely see where you're coming from. Of like, especially with Jared being the one who like has 
not only a wife, but also has so two much. kids that he has to take care of. And he's working 12 to 16 hour days. Mm -hmm. Like I've, I've been there where it's like, I want to reach out to him, but I, I don't want to be another, like an, another, like just throw into the pond. That's already like fucking rippling with, exactly. with pebbles being thrown in. And it wasn't just like him. It was like a lot of people, even with Makolo. I think I talked but to I Dan a couple of times. Like, I don't want to be, cause I know Dan has stuff going on. Like, I know you have stuff going on. I was like, I don't, I don't want to be a yeah. burden or bother to somebody. Like we were talking about, it's a dangerous headspace to get into because yeah. it just perpetuates and it perpetuates. But so exactly. sometimes yeah. you just got to reach out. Put a nail in that coffin real quick. Uh, so, well, I guess I, I do have a lot of more irons in the fire than I even think about sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, like I'm really big on like the tribe mentality. And, uh, and it actually is beneficial for me to also speak to you guys it doesn't matter if you're at your high points or your low points it's always mm -hmm. it's always good to interact with you guys no matter what and whether you're you're having problems or not like just reach out like mm -hmm. like i, I will I, all of my tribe is my priority not just my kids and my wife mm -hmm. but you guys too you guys are all my priority and i put you up there just just as highly as, as i do anything else so you guys are not, uh, you guys are not burdens and you're never alone. So even if I'm not with you guys, uh, I'm always thinking about you guys. And the same goes for my kids. When I'm here, I'm thinking about my wife and my children and she's saying we're not on anymore right now. Something happened. Did we crash? Uh, my phone's still streaming. Yeah. I'm Weird. still streaming too. I don't know. Mine, mine stopped for a second. Uh, so I'll, I'll check. Maybe hmm. it's my mic. Okay, now it's back. So it's probably our internet at home. So yeah, John no matter said we're still on. Okay, yeah. So no matter what, um, said we're still on. There we go. Great. <laughs> so no matter what, that like you, you spike. Uh, I'm always, I'm always thinking about everybody, mm -hmm. even like Nikki and Bree, who I I don't know as well as I I even want to. I still I still think of them. I was as about part to talk to this as the mic. <laughs> <laughs> and then you fucking did. <laughs> So I, I, actually, I was going with the bit, god damn it. <laughs> These are jokes. Um, I, I really appreciate it when you guys reach out, no matter what. Dude, Definitely. she will tell you as much as I will tell you, like one of the highlights of the wedding was obviously everyone having fun and a good time. Uh, but a highlight for us was that you were our officiant. Like that was a it really was a big cool deal. Experience. That was a really big deal for us because we had somebody in line and then they bailed and then we couldn't find anybody else. And then... I said it kind of jokingly, but yeah. as soon as I said it, her eyes lit up. I was like, why don't we just get Jared to do it? And it'd be like a Viking wedding. And she was like, Jared would be fucking perfect. Can you imagine that big bearded beauty up there? And I was like, is there something you're not telling me? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I thought one of the, the coolest. So like my three favorite moments of your wedding, uh, aside from the ceremony itself, because nothing can top that. That was super fucking cool. And it was great to see you guys. Um, my, my first was when we actually got there and everybody was getting ready, we were just like passing the meat around mm -hmm. and, and just like cool talking moment. to you and to each other about stuff, uh, cutting the cake with the knife. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like, I actually took out my sax and, and cut the, the cake with that. <laughs> Cause I was looking around. I was like, they were supposed to leave us like a knife to use. And I was for like, this. I got a sword. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pulled out like my Viking one of my and started cutting the cake. One of my it. favorite pictures of the whole thing was us standing there and you with the with the fucking sea axe, like just fucking going to town on this cake. Uh that was so much fun. And uh and I got to bless the altar with a warhammer. And uh and like it was so funny because we went out there kind of early, so there was like a bunch of like random people just standing around looking for shit to do. And they just see like me and Dan walk out to the altar and I'm just like reading this book and like got a compass in one hand, the book in the other. And then I just like lift up this war hammer and start fucking chanting. And everybody's like, the hell? what the fuck are we here for? <laughs> <laughs> hammer to the north. Yeah. <laughs> Who are they sacrificing tonight? Is like, is this like a ritual where the, 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 the husband gets like stabbed and the blood gets spilled was, on the altar in order for eternal life for the wife? It was, I uh, mean, that's technically what marriage is, but just basically. without, without getting stabbed. It was cool, man. And I, I really enjoyed <laughs> being able to like write the, uh, even like the, the aspect of like writing, uh, the, <laughs> the words. <laughs> That's perfect. I love it. 
Y'all so cute. So, uh... <laughs> 2018. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot to say. 20, so, 2018 is gonna be 20 slayteen. We're gonna fucking kill this shit. Got him. Fucking nailed it. You had another hand to do that yeah, with. That was we way easier. Side, we could be like, Fusion! <laughs> ha! <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and, <laughs> and with that... The Last Dragons of War are coming soon. Fusion. <laughs> so, now that we got the good and the bad... Can we get some uh, I mean, do you got worse? I can always get worse. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's our, se- that's our secret. We can always get it's worse. like the fucking depre- depression hole. No, hopefully optimistic. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's get- talk about, like, goals. Like, not only of the meta villains, like, what we want to do with the meta villains, but also, like, on a personal level, what do we hope to accomplish or at least take steps forward? Do you want to make that, like, the... Going back this you want to go, like, the last... Do you want to do that last? We get, we can- are we doing more? What are we? What else? Do you I thought we were do? talking about games and shit. Oh, you want to talk? We can talk about games and shit. We can do that. Okay, let's go. Let's talk about that. Shit. Tell me about Breath of the Wild, there, buddy. Because that's Xbox. all you're gonna fucking talk about. That's all you're gonna talk about. Are you talking about Star Wars? You're gonna talk about Star Wars. You're not gonna Stop talk up. about Star Wars. No, I'm not. He's gonna talk about how disappointing it was for him. Nope. And how he ruined it for himself. Yep. I have to watch Star Wars again because, despite my initial disappointment. That was also viewed like the week after. <laughs> so I'm going to give it a pass for right now. <laughs> Not sure about my headspace. So uh, let's talk about good stuff. So <laughs> what, what do you got there? <laughs> it's just, I, I don't know who half these people are, but it's they're amazing. saying funny <laughs> shit. <laughs> see what we got. I was watching the news and the New York police chief said, we will never forget 9-11. And I Damn. couldn't help but think, I hope you don't forget your phone number. Ha! <laughs> hey! I just want to, like, Tommy was so laugh, like, ha, 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 ha. Anyway. So, um, my friend Eden. So, uh, the, the, oh, fun. the best games of Skywalker. Oh, hello, dog. Hey. You, are, you, are, you are definitely a best part of 2017 and yeah, more. You are yeah, you are the best part of every yeah. year. Yeah. There he is. There's Top 10 anime old. good things 2017. Oh, on, so, um, we didn't make a channel for that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, video, vid, video games. Okay, I'm All right. Go, All right. So I'm going to talk about not just video games, but the, the way that video games became, uh, relevant for me again. Um, because I'm pretty famously, the guy in the group that doesn't play video games. You enjoyed Final Fantasy last year. Oh, and I damn sure did. And that was the only thing. So, are you going to play the um the online version for it? No, probably not. Oh. So, I, I, I don't do online games. So, <laughs> have fun with friends? Nah. <laughs> um, hey, there's a great video called The Death of Couch Multiplayer, which Snakeboy229 <laughs> says everything that I've been saying for fucking years. Except anyway, so, um, so at some point in 2017, I was, we're having a, we're having a rough patch. And I said, you know what? There's this thing coming out called the switch. I think Nintendo might actually be onto something with this shit. So I made it a personal mission on a whim, which is how I do most of my life, um, to get a switch. Eugene helped me out. Hashtag Savior Eugenics 2017. Uh, I got a Switch. I got Breath of the Wild. I got Snipper Clips. And um, if you, can you grab me one? That would be amazing. I, mean, I don't have water to so grab. Yeah. Oh, no. I was specifically going for a bottle of water from my car. Oh, okay. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, I can just get glasses of water. No, it's okay. Um, so... I pick up a Switch, and I play Zelda Breath of the Wild, and Nintendo did a monster solid for me and gave me everything that I've been asking for for years. Um, they checked off all my boxes. Open world exploration, um, fantastic art direction, and future Zelda, which they gave me in a kind of indirect way. I've always yeah. kind of wanted like a cyberpunk Zelda just for them to change it up. But I, I did kind of get a post apocalyptic style Zelda. And that was a brave move. Plus and the, it was genius. Plus the bite from the DLC. Right. Hashtag brave tweets. <sighs> so, um, genius move. I had fun with snipper clips. We got one, two switch, which has been a, a fun party distraction. 
got um, Sonic Mania, which is the first Sonic game that I've enjoyed playing in many, many years. It's pretty good. Um, it warmed my cold, dead video game hate and heart. So um, I still can't play couch multiplayer with my friends as much as I would like to, but I, I know that the, the Switch is going to be you know, rolling out more multiplayer experiences <laughs> for sure soon. And that's a huge thing for me because while I don't mind and you know, <laughs> the guys have been gracious enough to, to gift me some computer parts so I can possibly hop online with these, uh, with these gamer girls and online, you say, yeah, I might well, actually hop on the internet to play video games with you guys. Um, which is wild for me because I despise online multiplayer, anything, um, unless it's with my friends, but that'll take me more to like the land parties of my youth where all I had to do to talk shit was not talk into a microphone, but lean back and go, well, you suck at fucking counter-strike. Like that's what I like, you there know, you, know. <laughs> you um, want to shit talk in person is what yeah, you're saying. I've if it doesn't end in an actual fist fight, I'm not fucking interested. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, whatever. Um, so just, you know, the, going to the, the point of, oh, thanks, man. Um, getting to the, the point of how 2017 changed gaming for me. It gave me the Zelda game that I always wanted. It gave me things, fun things to do with my friends and honestly helped uh, bring... Um, we're not fucking playing Heroes of the Storm, Ernest. You fucking hang that shit up. <laughs> I'll play Hearthstone with you. I'll play either with you. <laughs> so I mean, if if all of us got into into Heroes, I'd play because I'd be I would just be happy to just play a game with everybody. I'd play it for the crew. Yeah, yeah. I'd play it for the crew. I'm not into MOBAs, but if he wanted to take our scrub lords to the top. You know what we got here? We, we got, got some... we got a we got a bunch of shit like going on. Pretty... Oh, let's, let's. There you go. You can read the chat. I'm gonna read. Uh, Chris, are you, are you good? Are you good with all <laughs> that now? You talked. You talked enough about Breath Jesus Christ, Grandma. Stop knitting. <laughs> hey, hey. I um I resemble that remark. I I love it. If I'm not mistaken. That's all two of my coworkers and their mom. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, Scott. You want to let the us know what the best part of 2017 is? Show bobs, uh, show okay. boobs, maybe. It's show boobs. I don't know who that is, though. You want to see my boobs? We can, we can talk. Um, I lift one up now. <laughs> nice. But um, no, yeah, that wraps up the uh, best best gaming of of twenty seventeen for me. This the switch really fucking killed it. Skywalker, come here. Anybody else? Jared. No. Sky. <laughs> How about Sky. You? Uh, I like games of this year. Uh, so games this year. So. For 2017, you want to see the Corgi's um, boobs? Chris is <laughs> Chris. Chris has got something brewing in his back pocket. So for that specifically, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about D and D in that video, and uh, like with my own little love letter to it. And in addition, there was another game that came out that was in the um, the spiritual successor to a game called Planescape Torment, which came out oh like 99, 2000. Um, which it's based on the same engine as uh, Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate 2. Um, so all, all the games that are in my wheelhouse. And I never finished Planescape, and I even have the Enhanced Edition, and I still haven't finished it. Um, but the spiritual successor came out to it called Tides of Numenera, which has, like, Monty Cook, which he basically wrote D&D 3.5, um, which is considered by many to be the best <laughs> Dungeons & Dragons. Get a large hand in second edition, a lot of Faerun. Um, yeah, he does. Eight. So it's it's his kind of brainchild mixed in with a, a lot of the other guys who originally developed Planescape. So it's like the old Black Isle Studios. Yeah. So Didn't I tell you that they made a spiritual successor? Isn't that what got you to buy it? It's the Tides of Numenera. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I, I actually saw it the, on launch. I was like, the fuck is this? It was like Tides of Numenera. And... Um, I, yeah, you, you told me about it afterwards, and I was like, yeah, I have to look at the reviews for it and see if I'm actually going to pick it up. And basically, I put it in my cart when it was on sale, and uh, I like went and <laughs> spent like an hour looking at videos to see if I was really going to get into it. Yeah, because I, 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 I felt bad, bad about Divinity 2, how that I didn't actually, click. I like Divinity. Uh, I th think I would really only want to play it with other people. True. 
Like that's that's that style of game. Like I want to play Baldur's Gate on my own. I'm gonna play Divinity with other. For sure. Um, and Divinity honestly looked like, as far as like the the dungeon master mode, it actually looked like it was too much trouble. <laughs> like <laughs> like it was too much work. Like I could just play D and D, which I already know, and really do things to the way of my own expectations and us have as much fun as we would be having playing that game. So, um, which interestingly enough, me and Savannah, uh, it's Savannah, not me. Savannah discovered earlier today, uh, a way for us to play Dungeons and Dragons remotely. Yep. And we there. are going to start doing that for people who have solid audio, um, that we can just tie you in. Um, so we'll, we'll do that. If I would, I would love to do that. I know, I know, I think I've talked to her about that before. Cause there are many platforms that are out there now that let us do something like that. Yeah. And I think I haven't talked to her yet, but I would like to talk to your wife, Brie, about doing an, if we're going to go that route to do an overlay that is a little bit more robust. So that way people can know our character names, can yes. know our level, our classes and our skills. I agree. That way there's, there's more investment from an audience. Cause when you pop into our stream and it's just like a camera on like, you know, six dudes at a table, it's, it's tough to figure out exactly what's going on if you're popping in for the first time. Yeah, I agree. Really. Well, I'm just inspired by all the other D and D streams that I watch. Like I've watched pro Jared, like every time he fucking streams D and D and I'm like, we need to do more shit like that to make it we, more we interesting. Will. That's, that's a very high, uh, I don't want to say it's high production quality because it's really not. It's it's <laughs> just a when you're at that time where you know what you you do with yourself. Yeah, we don't. We're still kind of figuring shit out. And we'll we'll get there with time. But yeah, like right now we're at like the practical application side of things. We're just making things that are, have functionality. Um, and but I I agree. I think 2018 is going to be a, a ton of improvement for us, both visually. Uh, sound wise where I'm going to invest in more of the mics that you have on your desk where that's all I'm going to have. I'm just going to have all those. Yeah. I can't fucking wait. That, so that'll be all the mics that I have. Everybody, if we know ahead of time that we're going to be streaming remotely, then I can have like the two people who are going to be at, with me, which will probably be like Dan or like Eugene and Porky. And then everybody else can stream from their place. We have a challenge. What's that? Are we able to say a username three times fast? You want to give it a try? Say what username? The one at the very bottom. Hang me, curse, hang me, curse, hang me, curse. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. <laughs> Congratulations. We love you. <laughs> All right. Thanks for the also, follow, uh, man. Also, King, King, King Chris, uh, I'm loving, I'm loving these descriptors of us yeah this is amazing <laughs> tell me to put is some fucking shoes on, the, on in my own goddamn right? house <laughs> who's the dude on the right kind of it's like, far right looks like far right looks dude, like the chillest dude that's you I, no, here, <laughs> oh, on the far I'm left the... looks like you could run winterfell so <laughs> yeah. <that's you. laughs> which i responded with the king it's, of the north it's actually it happened <laughs> oh gosh that wasn't even close you, you, you just try harder what what if you say hang me curse really, really fast, it sounds like something racist is, oh. is the implication. Fam. Yeah, I was... I like, With Eugene and the St. Eugenics himself. I, I pronunciated <laughs> that curse like really hard, though, because I'm from the South, so it didn't sound anything like it. Yeah, it was like... You said the words properly, and it wasn't even like yeah. it wasn't even like that clever. <laughs> Overweight Damn. Scandinavian caterpillar Alice in Wonderland. Cool, dude! I can't wait to draw that. <laughs> Holy shit! Um, so to your point, Chris. Who are you? <laughs> so, um, so oh, by the way, um, what is it six sixa six za six za. Uh, you want to pop over to Critical Fit, uh, Twitch TV slash Roll Critical Fit. Uh, squats for followers for days. How many yeah. squats you want, big boy? Yeah, how many and how heavy? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Um, so to speak to your comment that you would like some more art assets, something very very exciting. If you might have known from the stream, 
from last night is all of us our our alter egos rather are going to be in the next critical fit book as characters as npcs what yes i'm gonna teach them how to jump <laughs> yeah <laughs> hopefully you're so, not teaching them how to jump <laughs> so ragnar and uh T- turkir and um you know aura and carrick and aragorn i mean apolloc um <laughs> and yeah. uh gosh what is I, I always just call her Mona Nikki. Mona Nikki. <laughs> That's not her That's name. actually her character's name, I'm pretty sure, isn't it? Is it Mona no. Nikki? It's actually no. from... It's not? What is it? I don't remember, it's to be honest. It's rough. Damn. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> it's rough gem at... I, just, I can't remember, remember the movie, because actually see she needed a character after the movie. I just can't remember. Uh... So, um, that's exciting. So yeah, um, you are going to be getting those high quality art assets and they're also going in a book. Nice. Yeah. So you were going to have tiny Jared, Mr. Steel, your elf, Aragorn. Mr. And Steel. yeah, that's what we, <laughs> we named the character is uh, tiny Jared. Tiny Jared <laughs> is Turk here. So, um, yeah, so that's going to be awesome. Okay. So all these art assets are going to be available for meta villain use, obviously. And we're going to, we're going to upgrade our stuff. So that's super exciting. 20 slate team. Jeez. <laughs> Make it a hashtag. <laughs> All right. So you two have done your games. Oh, let's what, what, what game really piqued your interest this year? Uh, and I'm only making you do it now because I have the pipe in my hand. Yeah. <laughs> um, His comments are amazing. <laughs> Fuck, I'm trying to think. Cause I didn't really get to do much this year. I ended up going to like putting no my game or movie that like, was just like, Oh shit. Bruh, my year legitimately has not it's been very lackluster. No, Sav, it's not Princess <laughs> Mononoke. That's the joke. It's Mononiki. Yeah. You talking about uh, talking shit about my wife now? Oh. Well, she's talking shit to me. I'll fight day. you. But she's talking shit to me because I said Mononiki. Play on her that, name. She didn't, she didn't understand. I mean, it. that's her <laughs> Twitch username, which was I was it. like, awesome. hey, you sound like you have fucking mono. That's gross. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She did, she did get it from Princess Mononoke, but it's Mononiki. Yeah. <laughs> I I put my faith into um into Destiny and it didn't it didn't it didn't make me sad. I was actually happy with it. I didn't play the expansion, but I want to. I haven't even bought it yet. I need to play it. I got spoiler, an spoiler. Ex- you don't have to. <laughs> I've heard that and it makes me sad. But it also I, saves I me twenty you bucks. Played what World of Final Fantasy? Cause yeah, because it and it's been in my house ever since. Because you were supposed to play. <laughs> oh man! Nikki <laughs> Nikki no. really wanted to play that game. Huh? The can, world of Final Fantasy. I had, I got it. Play with Nikki. I play with Nikki. There we go. Yeah. We can stream that. She wants a game to play. Yeah. Um, it's like Pokemon, but with Final Fantasy. I got oh. back hard into Rocket League again. So, I but mean, now I'm playing for Xbox. I have Xbox now, thanks to Makolo. Nice. Who is my saint for that? Because yeah. he gave me that for the low ski of nothing. The Saint Barking Spider. Saint Barking Spider. He gave me Xbox for free. And I was like. Can't be mad at that because it was gift to him. I was like, I'm gonna when I'm done with him, we'll give it to somebody else. Dog yeah, bless. Didn't he get a one X or something like that? Yeah. When's he getting a PC? Oh, bro. <laughs> 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 that that will be my next for tax time. Yeah. I'll run, uh, go ahead and run that. Yeah. Well, McCullough's not gonna get a PC until we have like office space. I'm a hundred percent willing to bet. For certain. Yeah. Well, mine would be, be hard because there's a little one running around in, in a two-bedroom apartment and, you know, not yeah. a lot of space. Yeah. You <laughs> so. know, it is what it is. Yeah, it's just the, uh... You know, it's, 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 the uh, it's the thing on top that's vibrating, that's all. But I've definitely enjoyed a lot of things coming out, which I'm ready for next year because I'm ready for God of War and I'm ready for the new Pokemon game coming out for the Switch. It's just going to go in the edgy version of what they did at Legend of Zelda. To be that um, open world, actually like training, fighting your actual characters, not like poking, but actually like going through moves and actually comboing yeah. that way. They've uh, which I'm they've, excited they've about. said that they're talking about making it an action RPG instead yeah. of a turn based. I've been saying this shit. For years. We all have, dude. Since Pokemon Stadium, <laughs> yeah, that's what Pokemon Stadium should have been, and it wasn't. I've been I've been I, dreaming of open I world. I was hoping that with X and Y they were gonna do something like an active battle system, mm-hmm. like you have in Chrono Trigger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which would really cool. I mean, I, I like your, what they your did. Your Pokemon and your trainer actually act on different intervals. Yeah. Different initiatives. Oh, has, are... has it been... When's the last game that had, like, a true Squeenix ATB? 
active battle? Active time battle system. Uh, 12. The last 12. Set, Like, are we talking 12, about Final no. Fantasy 12, or just in general? Active, well, no, no, 12 is possible, right. like... I, I think. Isn't it Chrono Cross? Or yeah, Chrono... Like, or, is it active? Of, or is it Dragoon? Legend of Dragoon. Legend of Dragoon. Was that active? Well, 9 battle? had active. It did. 9 had active. I thought it was yeah. just turn-based. I just played 9. Yeah, 9 so is active. So it's 9, then. I know 10 if did. we're talking about Final Fantasy strictly, yes. The hmm. last game that I played that had active time, uh, I think they produced it, was I Am Setsuna, which was I, like a little JRPG that came out for Switch. Thanks, King Chris. It, thanks it for the shade. Bad. Much love to you. <laughs> <laughs> Man. We'll catch you after season eight, my dude. I feel like I'm right now. Damn. <laughs> All that shade being thrown at me. You're right. <laughs> Whatever, man. They called That's, you the king of the north, man. Yeah. That, that they did. So and I'm just that. That smooth. was nice of them. Criminal. The there's pipe. a lot. There's a lot to be excited for for next year too, as far as games. Excited so. for another year of you guys. <laughs> oh, don't oh, cheese. I'm not with boy. you guys. Of you guys, I'm ready for another year. Like, hell yeah. Let's go another round. It's well, gonna be our finest year. Or it's gonna be the year that we're like, ah, the meta villains just dumb. <laughs> <laughs> so. Let's hope, it's, mm. uh, let's hope it's the former, not the latter. Well, uh, my, one of my resolutions is to do better with Jared because I fell off and I, I can't do that. Are we doing this now? Are yeah. we going to plans? I didn't even talk about a game oh, shit. or a movie or anything. Let's go. Don't jump. Oh, that's fine. I'm sorry. That's fine. Oh, <laughs> you play a lot more than anybody else here. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of honorable mentions. Yeah. I have a lot of games that I did not enjoy. I have a lot of games that I did enjoy. You are. The awards. Some honor honorable mentions. Uh, fucking Cuphead is incredible. Yeah. <sighs> yep. Is yeah, really, Cuphead really is. good. If you're talking about couch co-op game, come over and play this fucking game with me. Yeah, I played a little bit of it at uh, David's place the other day. and Because um, I have yet to beat it. Platform and Dark Souls. Yeah. <laughs> it was... Barely even platform. It was just fucking boss rush. It's yeah, like, hey, boss dude, rush. Beat fucking... these fucking things, you pieces of shit. Uh, Resident Evil Seven was tight. I'm I'm looking at you, Macolo. Like that's on honorable get, mentions. That's an honorable mention. Oh Which boy, one? was Resident Evil Seven. Hmm. And for me to be uh, for that to be an honorable mention means that there was a fucking good amount of games this year. 2017 had some some, some sleepers, but it also had Andromeda. <laughs> <laughs> biggest disappointment. That or probably Destiny Two were probably the saying, biggest disappointments Destiny for me. 2, Andromeda, Battlefront Two. I, go to yeah, Andromeda. Yeah, like, I would say Andromeda because Andromeda was actually a piece it of was shit actually game. Broken when it shipped. And yeah. Destiny, I still played and had fun and did all of the content, but yeah. it was lackluster comparatively to the first one. But so then again, it took them three years to get the first one right. Yeah. So the fact that they like went three years forward and then like seven steps back. Like the next one, you would think like, oh, all you have to do is just new content in the same scape of Destiny One, and you they're gotta like, hit. Let's but then blow our like, budget on Nathan Fillion instead. Let's get extra money in the Eververse. Let's not actually let you earn anything, and you have to buy it. Um, yeah, that was super cool, though. Yeah, I didn't get to play it in VR, unfortunately, Ernest. Uh, we played the demo in VR. We played the demo in VR, which was super cool. I could not justify keeping that around, so I sold it for exactly what I bought it for. Uh, but it was a really great game. All the DLC is good. Since you did Breath of the Wild, that's that is probably my favorite game that I played. That like yeah. I stuck with the entire way through, played the shit out of, enjoyed every single moment of it. So I won't talk about that. I'll talk about a nice little indie title that everybody needs to fucking play, and that's Hellblade: Senua's Sacrifice, because of the implications this game has by being an indie title and being a triple A indie title even though I hate all these fucking terms that we have to put on these things. Yeah. Because it's made by Ninja Theory, who, if you don't know them, they did the Devil May Cry reboot, which is oh. ungodly <laughs> underrated yeah, by is. the community. And you're all fucking wrong for thinking that game is not as good as the old Devil May Cry's. I'd argue that it's better I would in a argue lot that of it's ways. Better. Yeah, I checked it out from GameStop and turned it in. And me and my, my third key at the time, because I just started training there, he was like, what do you think about it? And I was like, better than all the others. Yeah. And he was just like, Really? Really? DMC, <laughs> DMC was so good. You could just crank up I the combi Christ. It's so good. Let's <laughs> tape it down a little. It's better than all the other um, guys for sure. Nah, dude, it's so good. We're we're gonna fight. <laughs> like God. that was one of the few games that I fucking played. <laughs> so this is a that was a game that came out in 2012. 
Yes. Oh God, it's been so. Long. It's been that long. It's been yes. that long. Just, there has been there has been like HD there were remasters. There a lot and shit. of fucking games that came out in 2012 that I think were clearly better, and that's probably sure. what over what what overshadowed it. Yeah, but. So in the con in the yes, it's a good game. In the confines of the year it came out and the games it was competing against, I still think that those games did better than it and deserve to do. In the in that. the scope of it like competing, Far Cry 3. in the scope of it competing with its its predecessors, yeah, it's absolutely, better. it's better, a hundred percent. I will not disagree with Ninja you. Theory knows like, how to make a fucking game because yeah. they also did the criminally underrated Enslaved. Yeah, which I don't know if any of you guys played that they game. Yeah, Enslaved. Oh Enslaved man, is, I love that game. It's incredible. The Journey to the West so, in the future? Are you yeah. kidding me? Come on. It was great. So, Hellblade. For anybody who doesn't know this game, it's a thirty dollar triple A title uh, because it has the production value of a triple A game with like really good mocap, really good voice acting, and and presentation. Uh, it's about you play as Senua who is on this journey to basically bring the skull of her like lover to the gods in order for her to like stop being crazy because the whole game is about uh basically psychosis okay. and that's like the whole appeal of the game is that it tells you play the game with headphones don't use stereo speakers because the entire time the voices in your head are fucking talking to you you're talking to yourself in your fucking head so it's responding on how you're playing so if you're nice. fucking up it's like why are you even doing this why are you even playing this game like why would you even try to go and do this all this stuff you're gonna you're a failure you're gonna die you're not gonna get anywhere and if you're doing well you're just like fuck yeah i'm doing it you're gonna kill this guy this is great and there's a lot of positive and negative reinforcement that i thought was like done incredibly incredibly well <laughs> along with the visuals are outstanding and the voice acting and just overall presentation of this game is just absolutely phenomenal for it to be a $30 essentially indie title because they self-produced it. They were like, we're just going to spend all of our money and make this shit. And it may not be the best game because the game is very limited and very easy to do puzzles and a combat system where if you've played any sort of dark souls action game, you'll get it and you won't have any problems with it until maybe the end when they throw everything at you. But just, I think this game was important for the medium as a whole to exist. And that's why I, I always put it on this pedestal that it, I, it just needs to be recognized for what it was able to accomplish. Yeah. It's, it's fucking, it's a rad fucking game for $30 or you can find it on sale for even cheaper. And it's, it's well, well worth the price of admission. Last year I talked about the, uh, the combination of Western and Eastern RPGs. And that I think, um, the first hybrid of the two was Witcher. And then I think we should be on the lookout for more titles like that and more hybrid titles where they're going to start combining kind of the best of the best. And we're going to get a lot of good games that just come out of fucking nowhere. And I think this year told us or taught us rather that we're also going to have these, what you said, AAA indie titles that yeah. are going to start coming out too. And, uh, and I think that that's perfect proof right there for for every bad thing that has occurred with video games andromeda yeah. battlefront destiny the whole loot box fiasco that's been going on uh there are handfuls of games that are like nah dude we yeah. still got it fucking good legend of zelda fucking we didn't talk about it but super mario odyssey is probably like the best mario platformer ever and the only reason it's not getting talked about for some people even though for a lot of people it's their game of the year, is because other shit like Breath of the Wild exist. Yeah. It's like we have been given so many good things that we we t we tend to forget that we have gotten some good shit yeah. because of all the bad shit that gets more press. Fair. Because that gets more clicks, that gets more views, that gets more, you know, recognition because it's, you know, outrage is is easier to sell than than praise. Well, we also tend to remember negative events because it's it's part of our, our survival matrix. And that, you know, if we don't think about the bad stuff, then we're doomed to repeat them. So we yeah. have longstanding consequence pieces of our brain that just keep that at the forefront. So, like, Mass Effect Andromeda was a really good lesson for us all in the industry to learn, whether you're a consumer or producer. Um, the problem, I think consumer and producers have learned their lessons. I really, but uh, unfortunately, the lesson isn't there for just us. The lesson is also there for the money bags, and I don't. Those guys don't learn lessons very easily. No, no not, fact, not EA, until it affects their money bag. Well, EA had two 
hits to the money bag. Andromeda, and Sorry. again with Battlefront <clears throat> Two. So maybe this year we'll see an, another upset, which wouldn't be very upsetting, um, and a change of business practice where EA decides, you know, maybe they're just going to be doing their sports thing and. And it's not even just them that need to know Exa yeah, that things are that we still need to be aware of these certain things because it, it pains me when I have friends or just acquaintances online or at work or whatever who say that they're excited for Anthem. And I'm like, okay, on paper, I understand where you're coming from because the trailer looked all right. Yeah. It looked interesting. It looked like a looter shooter, which I can get into looter shooters just because they're they're fun and they pass the time. It's made by the real Bioware team, not yeah. the C team that made Andromeda. But minus we forget their best developers. Yeah, minus the people it's who like to, founded Bioware are no it's very longer important there. Important to remember that. Yeah, and a lot of people have already dropped off the project, and we forget that Bioware is owned by EA. So <coughs> it's like, can like as as much as we look to the money bags to hopefully learn their lessons. As long as we have stupid idiots who don't educate themselves and they keep buying this shit, they're going to keep fucking doing it. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're, like, they're Battlefront is... 2 exists because they thought they could get away with it, which right. is because of us buying into shit like because that. Because of dumb consumers. Yeah. Uninformed consumers. And consumers that are very forgiving. Um, the, the community is still rife with a lot of people who think that the only reason people bitched about the play-to-win scenario is because they're kids who are entitled or they don't you know like some of the comments that i read from ea forums make me want to just fucking break people's it's, <laughs> it's one thing when you have a monetization system that's like here are loot boxes that give you cosmetics that don't change the game overwatch fine it's it's fine i would prefer to just earn them in the game and that mm -hmm. you didn't want to buy it you didn't want me to pay money to get all of them but it's fine it's not breaking the game. But when a game comes out that literally is like, if you pay an extra $30, you are more likely to succeed in combat. Yeah. Like, that's where the problem occurs. Yeah. When you can... It, it's hard to judge that compared to, like, a game like Magic the Gathering or Hearthstone, where it's like, no, you have to pay money in order to get the fucking cards. Yeah. That's how you compete. But that's also its fucking business model. Like, in order for you to play the game and compete at certain levels... You, that that's a game that you have to do it. Yeah, we're we're also comparing like a free download to mm -hmm. versus a sixty dollar yeah. experience. And yeah. dropping another thirty, and then you got to drop you know another twenty or thirty on a loot boxes, or you got to get an <laughs> ultimate edition that comes or with season pass yeah. or map packs. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's just absolutely fascinating. And here's the thing for me: is most shooters have a competitive environment. So, okay, sure. You're gonna have this play to win scenario with your your bros, uh, and okay, sure, I guess that that's really good. You spent an extra sixty dollars more than I did on loot boxes because I wouldn't buy a single fucking one, and you are better than me. Great, cool, yeah. you nailed it. But what happens when you go to like a pro level? I can guarantee you, no pro is gonna fucking play that game <laughs> because now you have to worry. Ernest, about we know Hots is free. Stop trying to make us play that game. <laughs> it's a bad League of Legends. It's a bad Dota. It's a bad Heroes of New Earth. That's it's right. not good. I don't like Smite either, but... It's a bad Smite. <laughs> it's a bad MOBA. It's cute, and I'll play it with you. <laughs> I'm waiting for the response. I'm waiting for you to like, slap his hand. Like, okay, I don't like that guy Stop anymore. <laughs> yeah. Stop it. <laughs> Welcome Stop to the Meta Villains. Yeah. You love us. You hate us. That's remember, our. Appeal. Remember that was our first tagline: "The nerd you love to hate." Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to fucking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Even finish that sentence. We're not doing this. <laughs> yeah, we're not. We're not going there this year. <laughs> Because last year I was specific. Year we went I was specifically warned by the dragon today to not do that. No, not at all. <laughs> so we're not just bringing up an it. old shitty tagline is all. Yeah, that's where it starts and ends. That's where it ends. Yeah. So um, plans. Plans. Who wants to start? We got a first plan. Is we need to all record some gameplay, or at least a monologue and. Chris, so he can pop it up some more, put in his own little 
multiplayer. And then after that, it's going to be back on. We're going to be starting up, if not next week, the week the week after, for, for sure. Uh, and a new space for Dungeons & Dragons. Um, will not be at my house anymore. It'll either be at uh, some office space or it will be at, uh, at Porky's tentative finding office space. Um, yeah, so that's a big deal. The meta villains are getting an office. In addition. Uh, Hopefully, yeah. Pushing more on getting out to see more movies uh, because I <laughs> it's like I didn't know this. <laughs> one of the most disappointing moments of this entire year for me has been seeing my probably my favorite film of the year, probably my favorite film of the last five years, um, Blade Runner, and not being able to podcast about it in like a timely fashion. Oh, like we can still relevant. podcast about oh, it. All podcasts. It's just like, I wanted to, it's not a top I wanted level. to capture, exactly. I wanted that, that top yeah. level moment. It's the same thing how I feel about Star Wars where it's just like yeah, our schedules we, kind we of. We should have done it right then. And we, yeah, we <laughs> fucked up. You guys and Macolo could still do a podcast about it. Like as soon as you get back and it, it'll still be fine because we could just talk, we could tag it as the spoiler podcast. And if I see it by then, you know, I can be a part of it. And we can we can do spoilers, but uh, this year I'm going to see more movies and play more games. Savannah's going to do the same thing. We talked about that. She she has to play new video games this year. She's got to see new new movies. Um, we're we're going to make an effort on our home front to create an environment that is conducive for both of us to be in content, both with and without each other. So I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty excited about that because I think you know, that'll that'll help us out a lot. You go ahead. Uh, if we're just talking strictly about meta villains growth, um, I appreciate that. I mean, I would like to talk about like personal stuff too, but if we're talking specifically about what I want to do for the meta villains, it's just number one, get back into the swing of creating content and forcing the hand. If I want content from you guys to make something special, especially because I had this idea last year to do a video where each of you can give me a game or a movie or whatever, something that sparked you in 2017 or it was last year. So 2016. And I just wanted quick write-ups, just quick voiceovers and just make a video out of that. And then I had my stuff recorded and it just kind of went nowhere. So it just, it just died when I wiped my computer like two weeks ago. And that's something that I want to work on is that if I have an idea and there's a project in mind that I want to complete, whether it's unoriginal or not, just make the fucking thing and stick with it. You know, mm -hmm. don't set myself to necessarily a schedule, but just consistently like spend a couple <laughs> hours a week and make something out of it. Like if I'm going to be playing a game, why don't I just fucking record the game so I can make a video about it later if there's something specific I want to talk about mm -hmm. and not, you know, just waste my... T I, I Playing games, as much as I love playing games, sometimes I feel like I'm wasting my time doing it because I'm like, I could be doing something productive with this, but if I yeah. add the productivity to it, then I'd probably feel better about the experience overall. So mm -hmm. that's my goal. That was the whole point of me getting, you know, that entire new fucking rig on the inside is to be able to do shit like that, to stream content on my own when we're not streaming to the MetaVillains channel, like stream on personal channels just for shits and giggles, record stuff when I can, come up with interesting ideas and talk about things that, videos that maybe haven't been made before or I still want to talk about and just make shit again. Because I, I, I felt really good when I made those reviews and then I just stopped. And I don't want to do that again. I want to like have consistency, which is always my problem is consistency. I always start strong and then just hip hip my way out. Hey fam. What's my turn? What'd you yeah. Get? What's your meta villain goal? <clears throat> meta villain goal is a definitely, I want to learn the inside stuff. Like I need, I need to, not even like I want to, I need to. So I am going to attempt to meet up with you and Jared and actually learn the editing and things like that because it's something I've never dwelled into before. I my, wanna... my, my house, when I'm here, is an open door, as you saw. I don't fucking... <laughs> like, I normally have my door locked. 
But knowing that you guys were coming here, I left it unlocked because I didn't feel like going downstairs. But if you ever just want to just text, just say, hey, I want to come over and learn. I'll literally set hours aside and I'll be like, here's some footage. Let's fucking play with it. Let's find some, let's find some cool things to do with it. Because I have to reteach myself too. Mm -hmm. I'm completely out of practice. And I, I opened Adobe Premiere the other day and I was like, I don't remember how to do any of this shit. <laughs> so it's going to be a learning curve for me again. But it's it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work because that that Chrono Trigger took me three days of like eight hours yeah, a piece. But it paid, but it paid, but it paid off because it and felt spades. really good after it was done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was like it was it was fucking awesome. And then from there, I want to try to meet up with Jared and actually do some stuff. I want to start doing stuff with everybody, like Makolo, Jared, you, Porky. I want to catch some stuff with Dan. Like, mm -hmm. no, me and Dan have a lot to talk about just anime wise. Oh yeah, <laughs> we can fucking go on a tangent. So I definitely want to do a lot more. I want to get more active in it as well as getting myself more out there and seeing movies. Cause you guys know that I don't ever see shit. Never had fucking something to talk about when it comes to a movie. <laughs> if I can advise to you, if you guys are willing for the monthly price, movie pass is a wonderful fucking thing. What is it? So me and Nikki subscribed to it a couple months ago and it has been the best thing uh, for us in our movie going experience. It's literally Netflix, but going to the movies. You get a you get a MasterCard in the mail. It's a debit MasterCard. You go to the movies. You tell it what movie you're going to see. It unlocks the card, and you buy the ticket, and it's $10 a month. And you can see uh, one movie a day. So wow. you can literally just go whenever you want. So I would not say it's conducive to use that if it's like a big premiere like Star Wars because right. you're just not going to get a fucking ticket that way because you have to physically be there to unlock the card. You can't like pre-order a ticket with it, uh. unfortunately. But if there's a movie that you're like – like the disaster artist, for example, we just saw that a couple nights ago. All we had to do was just, we just drove up there, unlocked the card and we just, boom, we just saw it. And it already paid for itself because the ticket would have been $12. Yeah. So you see like a couple of movies a month, you, it's paid for it's in so space. It's a, it's a, it's a really great product. Hashtag ad, <laughs> not, not <laughs> sponsored by it, but if anybody likes to go to the movies and just doesn't like paying the prices for it and is okay with waiting, Sometimes for movies, I think it's a really, really good product. Movie Pass hit us up, sponsor dollars. Okay. Yeah, as well sponsor from dollars. As well, from there, I want to start doing. I want to start doing some charity events. I actually really enjoy doing that with Jono and like going out, getting everybody, going out, getting people to like come in, donate things like that. So I'm definitely that. That's my major, anyways, public relations. So, oh yeah, something I enjoy definitely. As much as they were a bitch, sometimes I miss doing pixelated. Me too. I, I mean, don't think I'd ever want to go back and do specifically pixelated again. Yeah, we'd do our own thing. But to have something in the in the idea of what charity streams are all for is to just get a group of people together and just make you know, make shit happen. Right now in Whoa. the process. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Right now in the process, I'm gonna talk to you guys about it because I talked to Jared about it a long time ago about doing a uh, charity thing with Best Buy since it's part mm -hmm. of this, our part of our group. I'm in there getting like a couple of different podcasts uh different people groups around jacksonville as well as getting like jacksonville game truck out and just having like food and everything like that and just mm -hmm. having like a live stream like out outside for like eight hours be cool. different people. i remember you wanted me to go as critical fit mm -hmm. definitely which so be, which would be a lot of fun so i mean i'm in the process of that and it's trying just to Cause I got to go through corporate and stuff like that. So, but it seems good so far. And then once I get something down, I'm going to come to you. There's a lot of politics. It's going to take some time. Yeah. Don't sweat it. But they're willing to like, cause anything we make, they're going to match it. So I'm like, go for it. Hell yeah. yeah. That's why I need that text ID from him that before. But even if we don't do that, Best Buy will still do it through our store and double it. So. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. Oh yeah. We'll, we'll work on that. Let me shut this, shut okay. this down. So 2018. Uh, as far as podcast slash business slash villains slash critical fit goes, really what I'm trying to do this coming year is just become more, uh, this is going to sound so pseudo businessy, um, is to become more of a player in the Jacksonville gaming scene. Um, I'm working closely with Ryan Thompson of GAM mm -hmm. right now on doing some community events, doing crit fit in a live environment, 
uh, getting some meetups together, getting some people into the program, um, doing more things like coming up with what would be our next pixelated kind of idea, you know, an event that we can do to foster more community because that's the most important thing. We can sit on this couch and we can talk shit all day, but the most rewarding thing we're going to do is like get out in the community and, and be with the people who share our interests and do nice things for people. That's why I miss pixelated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really an excuse to get out and basically just meet uh, the whole fucking city. Yeah. All man, the, it was so much fun. The stuff that it has to offer in terms of similarities. Like the first one we did when the Resident Evil crew showed up. Oh, man, oh that was that awesome. Was so much fucking fun hanging out with Alex Sawyer, which also uh, we need to do. The reason why I really want to get back in the podcast as well is. <clears throat> Because I, I have like a fucking laundry list of people who want to get on our podcast as uh, as guests. Chris Haynes, I used to work with him at uh, GameStop. I know that guy. Yeah, he has his own Game of Thrones podcast now, movie podcast. So oh, fun. Um, he's super smart dude. Uh, I love talking to him. I think he'd be fucking killer to have on an actual like movie podcast, especially something like Blade Runner. Um, you know, we we still have Jay Palmer and. Right. Yeah, where we we could probably always reach out to him. Um, shit, man. And Alex actually expressed interest in just being on any podcast. Alex. Alex Sawyer. Okay. Guy who is the leader of the local Resident Evil cosplay group. Right. He also has a uh, local uh, cosplay company where he uh, prints, either prints or makes by hand armor, weapons, cosplay stuff. Shit. And he awesome. is a huge member in the St. Augustine reenactment uh, group. He's like, he, he fires legit cannons every year in St. Augustine. Sounds like a dude I need to, to talk to. He's fucking super cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's great. And Kevin is actually, used to be really good tight friends with him. That's how I met him. So, mm. yeah. So, yeah, things that are coming up. As far as my calendar for 2018, the official Critical Fit launch is going to be at a at an event Gam that is coming to it's going to be a so. yeah gonna, <laughs> at a GAM event that uh, will be coming soon. We're also going to be doing a secondary Critical Fit live event, which um, I'm working out the details of now, but it will feature pretty much anybody who wants to come. It's and me deadlift and <laughs> we're, we're gonna do <laughs> not unlike the last time except i won't be drunk this time <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see um basically we're gonna randomly assign people into parties Ooh. and uh it's gonna be a competitive thing oh um so everybody's gonna do very simple stuff i might you know it's gonna be simple like a eh, push-up challenge or tug of war or you know squats. running suicides or doing squats, squats. Or, or or doing stuff like that and you're gonna be paired with people you have you have no idea you're gonna be in a random party and your team will vie for for victory whoever well now they know they're gonna be in a random party i guess you I said it start doing a yeah I guess we got to start working out. Yes, for real. Start to work out. All right, burpees. Hey, I got a kilo on my side. We can about to do burpees this. Burpees for days. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's a, a big thing that's going to be coming up uh, right now. We're working on the timetable, but uh, April to May-ish. So uh, we're going to get that event together. I'm going to run DM, basically, or I might get Jared to do it because <laughs> <laughs> uh, he is the most DM-looking motherfucker <laughs> I can imagine. Um, but... Uh, cosplay is going to be encouraged, so I'm um, I'm g getting into a new weird genre of cosplay that Brie sort of started, which is like uh, fantasy workout gear. That <laughs> you need to just sell that. So um, so that's kind of a thing that's coming around, and uh, yeah, so basically growing the business, becoming more uh, of a community, like you know, gaming activists so to speak like getting more people involved and of course uh you know working with jared and trying to get this this new space going finding you know that and also plans for the new year 
want to do more nuts and bolts kind of material. We've kind of talked about it a little bit of like whenever you see some sort of content that we do having a little behind the scenes clip or something. And, you know, we talk about why we do the things that we do and, and, you know, sort of that. So you can see kind of the creative process. Cause I know a lot of people are interested in that kind of content. Um, but you know, it'll be much more interesting once we actually get some more <laughs> like to watch Chris edit. It would be very interesting to me to see the 100%. amount of times that he yells fuck at a computer monitor. Um, <laughs> Probably about as many times as we yelled fuck during that Chrono, Chrono Trigger, Trigger debacle. <laughs> um, but yeah, just doing more more stuff, getting more involved. I'd, I'd love to see us do like, I was telling Jared earlier, like nights of the week where we are kind of scheduled to do our own thing and then you know, so we, we got more content coming out for you guys and yeah, I mean, 2018, I got, I got big ideas. So we'll see how it goes. It's going to be tits. Yep. Fucking see you losers in 20 slay teen. <laughs> 20 slay teen. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Peace. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to go do the 2018 thing now. <laughs> yep. So Everybody, I believe that is the end of the podcast. To we had up to like seventeen people in the stream at one point. Nice, oh, super really? nice. Oh, wow, nice. Super rad. Thanks so for everybody uh, who stopped by. Thanks yeah. a lot uh, to everybody who's still here. We love you just as much. Definitely, um, Ernest. Uh, it's not going to happen. We're not going to play hots. Uh, <laughs> not that. <laughs> <laughs> Chef Sam, dog. We. Were, I was going to do. Just it. kidding. Going to download it tonight and be like, okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> Just you, kidding. Buddy. Just kidding. If you want to play it, I'll, I'll I'll learn. I'll learn how to play. You gotta carry. You gotta carry me though. Yeah. Carry I'm... carry us, John Across. Your only hope. So yeah, <laughs> we got. 2017 was a a great year and a terrible year, all wrapped up into one year. Um, but we made through it. So hopefully, let's make 2018 a little bit better. Rock and roll. Oh, it's going to be better. Have a good There's New no Year's. Choice, man. Be yeah, safe. Yeah. Enjoy yeah. your New Year's. We love you all. Jared, you want to you wanna kiss them goodbye? <laughs> See you guys later. Bye. <laughs> this kiss just sounds so pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> that, old, that, that used to be the way he always ended it. Yeah. All right, I know. Always kiss the snow.